What the? F <laughs> Jay, what'd you do, man? Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to go live. Actually, we are live. Whoop, whoop. Here we go. Red skin. Seven Horse, it's the Kevin Holly Show. This radio person is the whole problem. Are we going to allow this guy to be heard by anyone who can turn a dial? I've got a pirate radio station. Nobody knows who he is. You out there? You listening? Oh, welcome to the Kevin Holly Show. It is, uh, what, July 4th, 1776 again? I think so. Man, that's a great day. It's always a great day at the Kevin Holly Show studios. What's up, Jay Bird? How you doing, man? Hey, I'd like to welcome everybody to... I wish they were here with us at the Dump Towers. I wish they were here as well. Pops, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. Pops in the house. Pops was eating a fish sandwich from uh, Mickey D's earlier. It looked good, smelled good. It was. I had a bite. I stole it from him. I had mm. one chicken nugget. Oh, we got a lot going on tonight, man. I had a double quarter pounder burger, cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got so much content tonight for all of you lovely listeners out there. Throw out that hotline. Um, we're going to be taking live calls after the first hour, so uh, don't call in the first hour. I won't answer it because we've got a special guest calling in tonight. We've got the legendary, famous movie villain actor Mel Novak calling us from beautiful California and uh, so we'll be uh, taking calls in the second hour I'll throw that hotline out at that point also hit us up on Twitter that's at Kevin Holly show four that's the number four uh, this is our 55th episode man it's pretty crazy man if you think about it it is man I mean I can't remember 50, 55 times you've told me to go fuck myself basically <laughs> I can't. I can't even remember episode fifty-four. Yeah, me neither, man. Thankfully, it was a dumpster fire. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Fifty-four was the uh, the roast of Kevin Holly, where uh, Pops went off on a tangent about uh, witchcraft and some strange uh, some strange topics that I don't think I'm uh, qualified enough to understand, man. Still, I had nightmares for like seven straight nights now. I don't know what that was all about, but maybe we can touch into that a little bit later on today, and Pops can uh, do that thing that he was going to do with us individually uh, last week, which sounds kind of... How does that sound, man? What does that... sounds kind of touching. <laughs> I just want to say to everybody out there that's listening, all right, if you've never been involved in a roast, I mean, we roast each other all the time, but when it's like... 
you've got your few minutes to set up something. I mean, roasting is what we do, all right? And this is what we have fun in. Our best roasts happen at, like, midnight on the phone on a three-way conversation or whatever. But unless you've actually been there and had to roast people and come up with stuff about them, it's actually kind of difficult to do it on the spot, man. I uh, like. I can appreciate that because I'm a difficult person to roast because I'm nearly a perfect human being, you know? You were the easiest. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. I, I thought, you know, uh, hey, we got people in the chat room, too. Uh, definitely hit us up in our chat room on Spreaker.com. If you're not listening to us live right now on Spreaker.com, but you are listening to us in the future on a download on Spreaker.com, you can always go in that chat room Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and chat with us. Got vape and chill in the or house. I tell, you, I tell you what, if you're listening, if you're listening right now and this is recorded, it's not Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Yes, it is. Then I'm <laughs> saying, if you're listening recorded, oh yes, then just call Pops, man. Call Pops at seven two seven eight four nine four eight three two. He'll be more than glad to take your call, and I'm th- completely sure he will blow your mind away. You know, I've uh, had conversations with Pops, um, not here at the show, but on the phone before. Uh, as well as my children, and uh, he's great in conversation on the phone. So yeah, call pops up, and uh, you can request uh, you know content. You can talk to him, let him tell you stories, all that good stuff. I like that idea. Uh, what does he, he prefers after midnight? Right, like a gremlin. No, whenever they're up to it. Whenever you're up to it. Yeah. All right. That sounds. Oh, look! I busted my coolie. Damn, my license to chill just got crackling with my. Uh, Learn at AC.com, learn at air.com, AC Emergency Hotline. One of our sponsors here on the Kevin Holly Show. I'm just kidding. They're not our sponsor, so I'm not going to read out their phone number. Their koozies suck, I'll tell you that much. This thing totally broke, man. How am I supposed to keep my soda cold if I, uh, if I don't have a koozie, a functioning koozie? Yeah, my bottle topper thing. I don't know. That's why off, I drink man. water, man. Yeah. It looks Is that straight vodka? What, are you recording this? No. Oh, we don't record the show. Video in it. That is, it looks, it says purified water on that bottle. That's but it, exactly what it is, my man. It looks like pure vodka, straight vodka. I would never drink pure vodka. <laughs> yeah, you got to put at least one drop. It would have at vodka. least a splash of uh, <laughs> cranberry in it. Right on, right on. Oh, man. So, yeah, going back to the roast last week, we had, uh, man, we had Ryan Hoppy up in here. How cool was that, dude? Dude's like, uh, Pretty nice guy. Drove 75 minutes from St. Petersburg, Florida here to uh, Newport Ritchie and our beautiful Dump Towers, Kevin Holly Studios. And uh, I thought he was a good host. What did you think, Pops? Yeah, he was all right. He was, he was all guy. right, yeah. Have you listened to uh, Hoppy Hour yet? No. Jaybird, man, I gave you a, a device to listen, for Pops to listen to podcasts, man. What's going on? Yeah, um, that little... It didn't work out well, man. Yeah. Do I need to get to uh, get with HR about this? Or yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking for a sound system to be installed in his room. <laughs> <laughs> totally on the expense of the Kevin Holly show. Yeah. And, well, um, look at the uh, the donate. I like bucket. surround speaker system. Okay. Um, these are some of the demands that he laid out to me before cool. he came in. Uh, okay. Pops, what were you saying? You'd like a uh, five way surround sound with multiple beat um, bass speaker. And um, a two-way infusion speaker headset with... Um, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. A double dick trickler. <laughs> I don't have a double dick, so I don't need that. <laughs> hey, speaking of double dick tricklers, Jaybird actually uh, brought something to the table tonight here. He did it right here live in studio. Not live, but recorded. I've, I've got it. <laughs> I even already made it an MP3, dude. So... Uh, Let's just go ahead and play it. You'll figure it out. Here we go. Doing things right first time, even if it takes more time and effort on our part, it's important to us. Jaybird we'll made a phone call tonight. First, let us know how we can. Are we that juvenile, dude? I don't think so. I think this is great. Man. Let me do my my hoppy impersonation. Oh, you made a prank phone call, you fucking hack! I'm about to die, dude. So, right there. Here we go. When storing your supplies, be sure to keep them in a dry area, away from moisture and hot or cold temperatures. Also, what is avoid this, leaving man? supplies in a hey, hot Hey, Glick says uh, roasting is what you do. Uh, you might tips, reconsider what you do. <laughs> <today>. <laughs> I'm going to take your cover off. 
Thank you for calling 180 Medical. How may I direct your call, please? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm looking for the um, free catheter supplies. Okay, and so you're not a current patient of ours? No. Okay, um, hold on just a moment. All right, thank you. Date. This is Amanda. How can I help you? Hi, Amanda. How you doing? Um, my name's Jay. They call me Jaybird, but um, I'm looking for a catheter system. I don't know. I, I keep having troubles. It's just running down my leg. Uh, my couch is soaked. And um, okay. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure how they work. If they got something that can fit around the um, head of my. Um, well, this is kind of embarrassing. I think do the catheters. Do they go inside the penis hole? We have a few different kinds. We have um, the standard catheters that are inserted into the urethra. Um, they're about 16 inches long, and you drain your bladder and then remove it and throw it away. Um, and we do whoa. have the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. 16 inches long? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean... Yeah, it's about 16 inches long. Just so, I mean, it has to be able to insert 16. into the bladder. Ask if she has anything bigger. So it really has to go 16 inches into your, you know, my deal? Yes. Mm -hmm. It has to be inserted far enough to where it hits the bladder, and then um, once the fluid is drained, like I said, you just remove it. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, another option we have, uh, what we call condom catheters, and they fit on just like a condom, and then um, that's another option. You attach it to a drain bag. Uh, so there's a couple different ways you could do it. All right, so and what, what are you thinking I'm, I'm definitely... Are you thinking more along the lines of the condom catheter? Yeah, yeah, because I, I I just I can't imagine. I mean, my penis is only like an inch long, and then if you're talking <laughs> 16 inches, that's, I mean, it's going to run up inside my body 15 inches? Well, I mean, it, it go all depends. Your liver, they bro. are 16 <laughs> inches long, but if you... If you get it far enough into where it hits the bladder and you are able to drain urine out, you don't have to insert it completely. Um, it's just the the standard. It's just a standard size. Um, we, you know, we this need it to be long girl. enough to where it can insert and hit anybody's bladder, but you don't have to insert it all of the way if you're able to drain without with with you know some slack on the end of it. Do you all offer a service where you would come and insert that? At all? Um, we do not. We are just a supplier, um, but you can check into like a home health agency. Uh, they, you know, would be able to come out and perform the catheterization for you. And the only thing with that, um, if you do have a home health nurse coming out, we actually wouldn't be able to supply them to you. Um, we only bill through insurance, so okay, all right, um, we. All right. gonna... I'll, I'll go with the condoms, but I got to tell you, I have never found a condom to be able to fit me. So I'm just worried that, like, if I put this around my willy, it's uh, probably not going to do much good. I mean, is it just going to like slip off like they do when I'm having intercourse? Um, that I mean, we have various sizes of them. Um, have you spoken with your doctor? Did a doctor prescribe anything for you, or are you just kind of no, trying I just, to see I'm, what I'm works? just trying to stop from, I don't have insurance, I don't have a doctor. I just piss myself quite frequently, and I'm wanting to stop that. I mean... Okay. Okay. I see. Okay, okay and we so, do bill through... Like condoms, I'm talking like the size of a pinky? Is that... You got those? Like a little finger cup? Um, I... Um, I'm not quite sure if we have those available. Um, what I can have you do, I do have a website here where you can kind of get on and look at some. Um, let's see here. I can send you a picture. I can send you a picture. No, thank you. 
No, thank you. What if it was uh, like no ten thanks. inches long? Okay. Um, I do. I, I have a website here. <laughs> sure. I have a website here that you can get on and um, check uh, out a few online and see if something might work for you. If you want to write this website down, I can give you right, this. Hold, or hold, have on, a phone hold on, hold on, hold on. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I just pissed myself. Hold on. Is it Pornhub? Okay. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. No. All right. What is that website? Let me know when you're ready for it. I, I'm ready. I got... Oh. oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. Can you give me a towel over here, please? On hey, all right. Yes. Um, yes, I get your towel. All right. What's that website? <laughs> okay, it's Allegro Medical. Allegro Is Medical. That's a, uh, yes, that's A L L E G R O. Okay. And then medical. All right. Dot com. Okay. Um, that was, they provide pictures on there and a few different. Um, Ooh, nice. Yeah, so I would definitely check out there. And they don't require a prescription, so um, that wouldn't be a problem if you don't didn't have a doctor prescribe these. So I think that would be your best option right. to look on there and, and browse um, through the different catheters. And you can get on there and see. And we, they actually do have, I mentioned the standard male length catheter is about 16 inches, but they do have no, that, that shorter ones. that just blows away. I mean, 16 inch, I'm not black. I mean, <laughs> that blows me away. I mean, but you say so. What, do you work? All right. Well, hey, thank you. I'm going to take, I'm going to go and check out that website because the picture things really got me excited. Uh, what was your name again? My name is Amanda. All right. Do you work on commissions, or I mean? Uh, no, I don't. All right. So you don't get a commission no, by the inch on the cable or nothing. So. An inch on the cable? What? No, no, what about I tips? don't. Did I give you a tip? No, I. <laughs> no, I sure don't. I appreciate it though. All right. All right. Love but you. If dear. you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call. All right. Thank you, All dear. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye bye. Bye. Wow, Jaber, that was uh, fantastic, man. I don't... Yes, what does Glick think of that trip? Oh, uh, that's a great question, Pops. Yeah. Uh, Glick says that Mel Novak just emailed him to cancel his call in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Glick also says, I love Glick, man. He says, uh, Roast me last week and now prank calls this week. What are you guys, 15 year old periscopers? <laughs> and I said, Yeah, we're, uh, we're hacks and shock jocks. And he says, That's riveting fucking radio. <laughs> Badass. That's badass pimp. Yeah, that's great, dude. Um, I don't know, man. You know, I was watching uh, Glick's Periscope Saturday night. That's the night that he does it. You know, the, the real, like, three-hour Periscope show that he I does. I know. It sucks. I work Saturday nights, man. You can watch the replay, dude. It's pretty simple. And you're going to get the notification if you follow him on Twitter. So, anyway, I was uh, walking around the house, cleaning up and stuff after work, whatever. I worked a four-trip night. I was in home till like, 10 o'clock. And... Uh, uh, Oh, God, excuse me, man. Anyway, uh, it was pretty funny, dude. I love being in the chat room during his periscopes because he'll get up and, well, there's so many people in the chat room. They all come and go and stuff, and I've gotten to know a couple of few of them, you know, and some of them follow our show and our listeners now, and they get in our chat room. It's pretty cool. And uh, Vic was putting on a pretty funny show. It takes some balls to, to really, you know, sit there with a with a camera on you live for three hours, you know, and and just field questions. It's not just about vaping. I don't vape. I think vaping sucks. But yeah, to each his own. Different strokes for different folks. But uh, it is so much fun to sit there and, and interact with Glick because he's funny, you know. And the people in the chat room are funny and gives me the opportunity to make stupid dick jokes and stuff. And then they laugh at my stuff and I'll plug our show. And um, it, it gives me that opportunity to kind of like meet new people and also interact with my buddy Glick, you know. And I make him laugh. He makes me laugh. We cut down each other all the time. It's kind of like a little bit of a roast, you know. But what happened last week, well, it happens all the time, is he'll get up like, okay, I'll be right back. I got to go pee. And he'll, and he'll leave the periscope going. And it's just filming his, his basement, you know, his his dungeon and if you look really closely, you can see the bodies. But anyway, so he leaves it there, and I'll immediately, like, be, I'll t start typing in the chat room, you know, uh, uh, or in the chat, hey, uh, let me entertain you guys while Glick's uh, gone. 
Uh, did you know that he sits down when he pees? You know, like <laughs> I always put a couple of one-liners, and he'll come back and he'll look at, and he'll, he'll stare at the Periscope to read the comments. And so it's almost like he's, his eyes are burning through your soul because you're looking at your device, he's looking at his device, <laughs> and he's reading my stupid comments, and he'll start laughing. It's fun, man. It really is. Anybody out there that's uh, into something completely different than internet radio or terrestrial talk radio or the same songs and commercials over and over again, uh, obviously check out the Kevin Holly Show because it is stellar. But uh, definitely check out um, Vape and Chill. Uh, Vape and Chill on, on Twitter. Uh, Glick Chris on Twitter. Both of them are on Facebook. That's, that's Glick. That's his show. Uh, it's a good time. Um, he says, don't tell about my bodies. Go get in that chat room, listeners, man. Have some fun in there. I love watching the uh, chat room blow up and reading people's comments. Sometimes we have like 15, 20 people in there. Other times it's just Glick, master vaping all by himself. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, but... Oh, man. So uh, in the second hour, after we talk to Mr. Mel Novak here in a few minutes, um, I, I know that Jay and Pops both brought a few things to the table to talk about. I got a couple things I wanted to talk about as well. I just want to kind of tease you a little bit. Um, you know, we have a weather system that's approaching Florida. It doesn't look good for uh, doesn't look good for us at all. And uh, also, we, there was a big earthquake in Italy. I wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, and there's a few other little things. Um, and strange news that I'm not going to tease, but we will be doing strange news tonight. I love that segment of our show. I love doing strange news. Sometimes it's really funny. There's a couple of good ones out there right now that I found, and um, I'm going to continue to surf while we uh, while we talk and uh, go from there. If you guys want to uh, call in the second hour, that'll be after nine o'clock. Uh, the hotline number is seven two seven two three seven six zero one zero. If you have anything you want to talk about or anything related to uh, strange news or um, or the weather events that are happening right now. Um, we're going to talk about that stuff, and I'd love to get some feedback. So that's all cool. Uh, couple, man. i got a couple things I want to throw out there real quick. Yeah, dude. what do you got to teach I, I don't want to um, – I just want to throw this out because I want everybody to listen to it and anybody listening or in the chat room if you want to discuss this earlier, later. Um, one thing is that homeless Chuck is really not going to be homeless anymore, man. And even though, you know, I really like the name Homeless Chuck, I think we're going to have to come up with a new name for him. Yeah. And he's getting ready to close on his house by Monday, so I'm wondering if there's any way that we could get him to sign at least one of his documents by his new name <laughs> when he closes on his house. Well, like, are we going to Like, no longer Homeless Chuck. I'm just one. Like, the lead base paint, you know, <laughs> he's going to have, like, 50 things, and we just got to get him to sign one of them. Yeah. By his new name. Well, I like that idea. We're going to have to figure out a new name for him, obviously. I have an idea. Like, um, you can't call him Homeless Chuck if he's got a home, and his name is Chuck. It's Charles, you know, legally, legitimately. Uh, what if we changed his legal name from Chuck to something else, like, I don't know, Dick, and then we could just call him Homeless Dick? <laughs> <laughs> What do you he's think of that? He's not going to be homeless. We just have to call him But Dick. people won't know it's him. He's got a totally different true, name. True. You know what all I mean? All right, all right. I don't know. Homeless Dick in the house, man. All you right. know, something not in the house because he's still fucking homeless. How about a dick that lives in a house? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a cat named Mo. A dick that lives in a house named yeah. Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you got, Pops? You got, what do you think about you got a that? new name for Chuck, Pops? Any ideas? We can get really down and dirty with this later, but off well, the top I, of your head. I, 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 I like Lonesome Chuck all along. Yeah, Pops has always been a uh, lonesome Chuck. But he's got two dogs, man. Yeah, well, that's he still has lonesome. two dogs. I mean, maybe when he gets another boyfriend, it'll be all good, you know? What? What? Too soon? What? Yeah, well, if he gets a boyfriend, then we can't call him lonesome. But until he gets a boyfriend, then <laughs> and two dogs ain't, ain't ain't satisfying him. He may be satisfying them, but you know, <laughs> he's still lonesome. Yeah, well, I mean, he spent all his money on this new house. So he probably can't afford the peanut butter that would make him not lonesome. <laughs> I like yeah, him. and if he did that, he might end up being called Chip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Opa. <laughs> wow, dude. A well, chip there, was, there was a while there, there for only maybe half hour or so that Peeping, peeping Chuck was kind of popular. I yeah. like Peeping Chuck, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but now that he's got uh, something that can be... Uh, I think be uh, recorded against. He probably won't want to do any much more peeping. All right, so that's that's one issue. The other thing, um, we'll get back to that more. Everybody, come up with your names for uh, homeless Chuck. His new name. I would say that if you happen to pick a name and we use it, if you call in with it, 
you uh, message it, whatever it is, however it gets to us. If you do, you obviously are going to win some kind of prize. Yeah. And, I, I mean, our prizes are usually pretty freaking nice. Oh, my God. I've got a whole slew of new prizes over here, dude. I've got, I've got some pretty cool stuff, man. I got some Harvest swag up in here to give away. I didn't want to give it away at first because I, I, I got that roof rack on my little shitbox Toyota, you know. And, you know, the, the kids these days are putting stickers on the roof racks. And I, I was kind of wanting to fit in and kind of having a midlife crisis now. You know, I got a car that's probably a high schooler's car. You know what I mean? Got rid of the SUV. And uh, I got an in-between car right now. So I got a little tiny little car and uh, with a big-ass roof rack. And I was going to put the Harvest stickers on there and some other stuff. But I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna give it away. Because, you know what? I, I think we, we would get the Harvest more exposure by doing that. Hey, uh, and speaking of uh, the Harvest... Um, that leads me to a quick segue about one of my other favorite bands of all time, Slingshot Robot. They will be playing this Friday night at Venom in Newport Ritchie, Port Ritchie, whatever it is, right there on the, right just south of the bridge, uh, separating Port Ritchie from Newport Ritchie. Speaking of, uh, and that's a free show, I believe it's a free show. It's outside um, at the back room, Venom. Uh, it's like a biker bar kind of place. Pretty cool uh, outside little stage there. Hopefully, weather will uh, cooperate with them. I'll tell you one more thing about Port Ritchie. I read in the news today that Port Ritchie has decriminalized in a three to two vote. They have decriminalized marijuana. I saw that. So you're looking at a parking ticket if you have a small amount of marijuana in beautiful Port Ritchie, Florida. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool for those people that need that for their uh, health reasons. You know, there's people out there that uh, <laughs> use the the devil's lettuce to uh, help them with their uh, ail ailments. You know, from uh, anything from glaucoma to cancer to uh, seizures and things like that so hey uh, listen i'm sure the harvest is totally happy about that because um, oh yeah yeah let's face it if if you're gonna want to you know go out and watch them you're probably gonna want to get really ripped before you go out. no i'm just kidding man <laughs> i love the harvest <laughs> <laughs> no they're cool like that I, I believe that they all just bought a house in port ritchie and live there together now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, they closed today at 2 o'clock. Yeah, right? Chuck's like, why'd you guys close before me? Yeah, I moved to Newport Richie. Fuck. Yeah, and Chuck's <laughs> scrambling right now to get out of that house. <laughs> so he can find one in Port Richie. I own a house in Port Richie. Hell yeah. Anyway, um, but I'm not uh, a partaker in the uh, devil's lettuce, so it's not going to make a difference for me. Uh, but when I have friends over, you never know, right? Like uh, friends like homeless Chuck, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, well. He doesn't ever come over, so. I'll only burn when I'm a loner with somebody. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you're not an alcoholic. Alcoholics need drinks, and uh, you got one right in front of you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Same with me with my uh, root beer, my soda. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, Glick's all excited. He's going to get a third uh, prize for giving Chuck a new nickname. I don't know. So, uh, hey, that, that brings up another thing that has to do with Homeless Chuck. Yeah. And um, he's actually offered up a... A real prize on this one, dude. This guy is for real on this. And that is a $25 prepaid Visa gift card. Homeless Chuck? Really? Homeless Chuck has offered this for somebody that came up with a great name for his new van. Really? He got a new van? He didn't. Yes, you know about this. His old van got... Sideswiped, yeah. But side-swiped. I didn't know. I thought they were going to repair that. He's getting a brand new van out of that little Oh, my crack? God. He already got a 2005 Town & Country it's silver. That's what it he was driving already. Seats, leather. Yeah, really? No, but his was older. What happened to the this, old one? Did he retain salvage of the old van? I would like to buy it from him. No, no, Damn. no. No, they, they hooked him up good. He got into like a sweet van. I mean, he pushes buttons and his doors open and the back door opens. Every are there, bell and whistle works. I don't you, believe you didn't know this. No, if you remove the back seat, are there still tie downs for that human sized bird cage that he had in the well, old van? Well, he's getting those installed okay, next week, cool, but cool, uh, good, yeah. good. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't know this. Chuck got a beautiful. Well, he's been new calling vehicle, me, but man. every time he calls me, I'm on the boat, or I'm um, every time he calls me, I'm either on the boat or I'm doing the show, or you know, uh, I'm sleeping. He calls me at like two a.m. Uh, speaking of people calling, we have a uh, special guest that's calling all the way from California. And uh, oh, I know I uh, plugged this and teased it a little bit earlier. Uh, Mr. Mel Novak, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, my how God. Are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, sir? Good. Hey, every day about the ground is a good day for me. That's what I'm saying. That's awesome, man. Dude, I got to say, it is an honor to have you on our show. Thank you so much for calling us. I was so excited all Oh, week. you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're, you're are welcome. you calling from Pittsburgh? 
No, sir. I actually have. We have a lot of friends in Pittsburgh, but you're calling uh, uh, Newport Ritchie, Florida, just north of Tampa Bay, sir. Oh, I'm supposed to do a movie night in Tampa, Florida later this year. Oh, my God. Is really? that close to you? Yep. Yeah, that's like a half an hour away from us. Oh, yeah. You could come on a set when we're doing it. Oh, Mr. Novak, I'll tell you what, that guaranteed, if, if that's a possibility, I will be there with bells on, my friend. I will bring you Subway yeah, or something. call me Mel. All right, Mel. Just call me Mel. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. No, from Pittsburgh. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh. Steeler Nation, baby. There you go. Are you Love a, this. Are you a Yinzer? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one time, one time I'm in this acting class, Green Actor Studio. We were going to go to the beach, so I said, Hey, what time you is going? And they said, what'd you say? What time you is going? What, you got a banana in your ear? You and what does that mean? Well, if I'm from, from New York, I say use. If I'm from down south, y'all, but I'm from Pittsburgh. We say you and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hysterical that you say that. One of my uh, one of my better friends uh, is, a, is a boxing trainer. And, um, yeah, they're all about the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates and the Steelers and it's a constant, yeah. yeah, you know, and they and they all they all say that, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's hysterical, man. Yeah, That's you know, great. it was. Uh, you actually, you played for a, you played for the I, Pirates, didn't you? Yeah, I was signed. That was my my nightmare because uh, I was like eighteen years old. I had sixty scholarships all over the country, major universities for football, scholarships in basketball. In a track, I was really fast. I ran 100 yards in 9 6. Wow. And I signed a pro baseball contract with Pittsburgh. And a year a year later, I'm a cripple. I had a massive rotator cuff tear, and those doctors butchered me. They put a, uh, like, a like an 18 inch scar, they took my arm apart. And I, I, I went from a real class athlete to a cripple. Damn, man. I was crippled for five years. Hmm. And I'd battle, I'd battle, and I kept, kept just after it. And where I did, I, I wasn't a cripple anymore. But everything was gone. My pro baseball career was gone. The scholarships were gone. Everything's gone. And the amazing thing was, you talk to any counselor, uh, someone that's eighteen, nineteen years old, and their whole life goes in front of them. All, all of their you know, life's desires and hopes and prayers. And all at once, you're a cripple. 99% will turn to drugs or alcohol, numb to pain, medicate the pain, and escape. And I never drank. I never did drugs. I was around Hollywood. In yeah. Hollywood, I was around drugs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm Serbian, and Serbians, they like to drink. But I never drank. <laughs> good for you. That's good. Yeah. And, and what, you, you became a, uh, a legendary film actor. How about that? I mean, an injury is not going to keep you from uh, getting onto the uh, big screen, right? Well, actually, I, I didn't come out here for acting. And uh, I just got tired of people saying, you should have gone to college. You've been a pro ball now because you had the highest punting average in the country. And uh, you caught 83 passes. I mean, on and on and on. And I just, I just had to leave. And I was working in an insurance company, and this one gal said, I, I always dress up. Uh, I, I get custom-made suits, two-tone shoes, and that's my signature. So this, this gal says, you really look good in clothes. My cousin's a modeling agent. Do you like to meet her? I'm sure. That's where it started. How about modeling. that, man? I've noticed you're a very and, snappy dresser. Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, it's funny, when I go into the prisons, I also have a Skid Row prison ministry, which is the opposite of what I do in movies. Yeah. I've died like 20 times in the movies. <laughs> uh, and, and and some of the black inmates go, mm-hmm. Now that brother, ow, he's sharp. <laughs> it really gets their attention, you know. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's been an adventure. Uh, the first movie big movie role I had was Black Mel Jones. It was the third biggest money maker. I played a hitman named Blue Eyes. And, you know, I went in to read with the director and I had I had a gangster suit, a gangster hat and uh, the last line in, in the reading was, look at him, he's sweating just like a pig. So, nobody else did this, so I said, look at him. 
I grabbed him by his shirt and pulled him toward me. He's sweating, just like a pig, and I spit on him, and I said, pig. <laughs> and he reached and says, okay, thank you very much, that's good. I passed out myself all the way home, pulling the driveway, and the phone was ringing. I ran in with Oscar Williams, who, who wrote the screenplay, and Cass, and he's laughing. He says, man, he loves you. You got the part. That's awesome. That was a great movie, yeah, too. I haven't seen it front to back, but I've seen many clips of it. And uh, yeah, that's that's totally awesome. That's a great story, man. <laughs> oh, and it, but it didn't stop there. No. So the first first day of shooting, I had this uh, older actor with a real bad accent. He was like my crime partner, and uh, he was screwing up on a dialogue that first day. And I'm thinking, man, he's giving me trouble. So I was smacking this guy around, and uh, so. The next day, after the dailies, someone says, Mel Nobrek, yo, the producer and director want to talk to you. I said, why? I don't know, but they want to see you right away. And I thought, so I came in and I said, did I do something wrong? They said, no, you did everything right. And to the sorry, can't handle dialogue. So we, we want to ask you, could we give you a dialogue? I had this big smile, open my hand, you give me all the dialogue you want. And uh, in, in the fight scene in that, in that car wash, they had the stunt people. They had the uh, karate people. Mine was in, he left in slow motion. It was so real because I was an athlete. And I'd hang out with the stunt people. And this is what helped me in so many pictures because I did almost every every movie, did my own fights and stunts. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the director, Robert Klaus, told me, he says, I'm going to take you to Hong Kong with him. We're going to finish Bruce Lee's picture. And... Uh, that was amazing. I was there seven weeks. You and know, everybody that you could imagine have seen that. Guys in prisons, uh, in, in schools, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I was looking through your bio and, and doing a little bit of, uh, you know, prep for, uh, for our interview with you. And, um, you know, I noticed that you were in uh, three, you know, you were in a bunch of movies, but three of them really caught my, uh, my attention. Uh, of course, Black Belt Jones. Also, um, the uh, movie Eye for an Eye with Chuck Norris. Anybody that's shared the screen yeah. with Chuck Norris, that's amazing. But most importantly to me, what really struck a chord with me was, uh, you know, Bruce Lee and, and Game of Death. Um, and, and, yeah. you know, that had to have been amazing. I mean, I've, there's so many things that ran through my head. Like, what, what can I ask him about? You know, Bruce Lee is just, uh, you know, an, not only an American icon, but, you know, worldwide. Um, worldwide. Absolutely, and uh, so never famous. be another like him. Exactly, never ever. Never, ever. Now let me ask you, you something, know, Mel. If you, if uh, you let don't me tell mind, you this first. Yeah, okay. I, I met Bruce, I met Bruce when he was doing Green Hornet. Okay. And he he looked at me with smiling, and he said, "You got a villain's face." <laughs> I said, "I knew that. I, I knew that." But he, little did he know I was going to be the villain in Game of Death. How about it? You've been in the. You've been. You're famous for being the villain in, in so many different movies, you know. And like you oh, said earlier, yeah. you you've been killed twenty it. times on the big screen. That's amazing, you know. How yeah. many actors can I've say done, that? Yeah, I've done uh, way over thirty starring, co-starring, and others. And right now, I'm signed for, with Gregory Hatanaka for five movies. Wow. I'm signed with Tom Churchill for two more. Uh, uh, Adam Rivera, I got an incredible role in a mafia guy with him. And a lady from London, Calendar, producer, director, uh, she signed me for three movies. I mean, it just never happened in my life. That's never. ridiculous, man. You're so busy. You're busier than me. And I, and I work, uh, you know, six days a week, man. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> What was you going to ask me? Oh, I yeah, um, I, and I hope you don't um, take offense to me bringing this up, um, but it's just... It's, no. It's something that, uh, you know... I think that people would really um, enjoy hearing and that really would strike their curiosity. And um, for those people that don't know that are listening, um, you know, you were in that movie Game of Death with Bruce Lee. And I watched yes. I watched a clip where you're holding a pistol sitting in a chair like they were filming a movie during the movie. Right. Um, yeah, that I was uh, I wasn't in a chair. I was. Like uh, crouched over, they had us crouching over. Okay, okay. And it was Bruce Lee, me, Bruce Lee, and, Bruce, and I shoot him. Yeah, you shot him like right in the face, and I guess the the good shot. It was a good <laughs> shot. <laughs> the, the, the thing that that struck me was, you know, the, the manner of uh, which it was happening. They were they were you know rolling tape 
in the movie while there this movie was happening they were like you know making a movie in the movie and yeah um, yeah yeah so you shoot bruce lee in the face there's blood everywhere he comes crashing down and you walk away and look over your shoulder and just kind of like have that look on your face and everyone's like what happened what happened and then what 10 15 18 years later bruce lee's son right brandon lee uh in yeah. a, a very similar fashion gets shot on set during Catch the her. filming of the crow that is that's Such something a great that, kid yeah how does that how do you deal with that knowing that you you shot his father in that movie in a similar fashion and then that really happens and I to his son yeah. i mean that's just i knew the family uh 10 years after bruce passed up at columbia studios they had a, a big thing about bruce lee i was the only one from the movie they they invited and i knew linda is bruce's wife uh, mm-hmm. and and brandon was 15 at the time and, and his daughter i mean his sister and uh Brandon was going to get married a week after the crow, or a month after the crow, uh. and he was just a, a, really a good guy. He did his karate really well. He was a good actor. Uh, it was just tragedy. The whole there was tragedy to that whole family. Sure. And uh, uh, it, it was, you know, that fight I did was from eight at night to late in the morning. That <laughs> rain. That that's a that great fight. Tough, you know, yeah. Night, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, we're talking with Mel Novak, a famous uh, legendary uh, actor uh, out in California. Uh, started his career back in 1971 and still has not finished. And uh, you know, you're known for uh, doing all of your own stunts and all of your own fight scenes. Um, who is the most badass person that you've had to fight on screen? Is it Bruce Lee, or, or is there somebody else that you know? Is, was there ever a challenge or something? Yeah, like it's, it's always Bruce Lee. I mean, I fought uh, so many of them. Chuck Norris, all of them, but uh, they couldn't touch Bruce. Uh, there's just all these wannabes. Right. Do you think and, uh, uh, between Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee, who do you think would win? <laughs> Bruce would eat him up. All right. <laughs> I remember Joe Lewis? I Joe do. Lewis? The boxer. He sure. was in Force 5? No, no, not, not, not the boxer. Oh, a different Joe not, Lewis. Not, not, yeah, this, this was a, a blonde, blue eyes, a karate guy. That he beat Norris. He beat all these guys. Oh, up. okay. He was he was a tough dude, good looking, and I I've always liked him. He's a really nice guy, but he got screwed up by cocaine. I was doing a movie with him, Force Five, and Fred Weintraub, the producer, with he was on the phone screaming for him to get his butt down there. You're not sick, and it's it just tragic how many people blew their careers because of drugs. Sure, and because that- of alcohol. And it's that? Uh, I did. A, I'm not going to give you another name. I was uh, doing a movie with with uh, Gil Brenner, which it was a great. I, he was. I, I loved working with him and Max von Sydow. And and this guy was drunk off there during the whole the whole shoot. <laughs> and uh, it's it just there was another guy that. Uh, I was doing Family Reunion, which well, I wish it had been released because he. You had greed, you had producers fighting, a director got fired, <laughs> and this guy was in the corner bending over, and he was in first blood, and he directed, he produced, and I went over, I said, would you like me to pray for you? He says, no, nah, I got cirrhosis of the liver. I had a quarter and a half whiskey a day for 16 years. Oh, wow, that's a lot of whiskey, man. And he died, he died two weeks later. Wow. These are all choices. And, uh, you know, you're right. That's the truth. I mean, you can you, you have to make that choice if, you know, it's, it's an addiction. It really is, you know. Yeah. We, we talk a lot about addiction on the show um, because, uh, Good. yeah, a lot of our friends and, and people that are guests on the show and, and just people in general, everybody's got a friend or a family member that's, uh, you know, yeah. had, had issues like that. And so we, um, we bring well, it up I've all the time. I've been ministering in Skid Row. We got the, uh, the 27,000 people homeless on Skid Row. And in prisons, I've been doing it 32 years, the skid row 34 years, and I see the devastation, what it did to families and people. And, uh, I mean, I remember going to parties in Hollywood that have bowlfuls of cocaine. Uh. And I remember before I was going to take some gal home, I'd zero in on like three of them. Yeah. And then I pretend I'm tying my shoestrings, I look up their nose. If I saw powder, <laughs> it was like, yeah, there you nice go. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good trick. Yeah, if they got a runny nose or. Well, I, you know what? I, I couldn't afford to 
to get caught up with anything like that. No, absolutely not. It's too much of a risk. No. Too much to lose, you know, and, and I've, yeah. had, I've had girls like that where, you know, um, and I'm not going to mention any names, of course, but uh, one that was very, very close to me and um, was into that kind of a lifestyle. And I told her, you know, immediately within like the first week of knowing her that that does not fly in my house and I don't want you to, no. you know what I mean? No. Um, so, yeah, no. I mean, I said you're going to have to not be friends with certain people. Or not be friends with me because I can't do both. You know, I cannot watch you do the things no. that you did. You know, um, so See, it was tough, again, you know? it's a choice. And, and, it's you know, a choice. You know what, Mel? I feel like I kind of saved her. Like I took, like I took her away from that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Because we had a great relationship uh, for some time, and uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, like I pulled her out of that lifestyle, and um, now we're not yeah. that close. So I'm not really sure what's going on now, but it is well, what it is, man. But it- Hey, and you know, congratulations yeah, yeah. to life. you for doing that too. That's, I mean, that's a great thing. To be yeah, life is short. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. believe how many people that that I helped get off of drugs. I mean, a heroin addict. Uh, I, I mean, you wouldn't believe. I got uh, letters three or four feet high. You read one of them and make you cry, but it, it's crucial. To reach out to people. This is what I do. I deal with people that are broken, rejection, abandoned, betrayal, suicidal, uh, depression, and it, it's it's just a war going on with, with a devil that's it's destroying these young people. You know, in our in our country, the choice of drugs for teenagers is heroin now. I mean, I couldn't even believe that. Yeah, that's heroin because, is no uh... joke. It's because the pills, they used to go with the pills, and it's harder to get the, the um, prescriptions nowadays because the uh, doctor shopping and uh, the pill mills, if you will, have, have been, they've cracked down on that stuff. So the next best thing, it's cheaper, is to get the heroin off the street, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, down in, in Skid Row right now, they have this thing called Spice. Yeah. It's uh, catnip, arsenic, and seven other real bad things, and they're dropping like flies. You know, I mean, there's yeah, we've seen it out here as well. Everywhere. We used to. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, you'd see it in the gas stations for sale here, and uh, they outlawed it, but uh, people still do it, and it's um, it's pretty bad. They're doing bath salts and uh, you know this thing called uh, flaca, and it makes people get overheated, and they take their yeah. clothes off, and they're running around naked, just fighting people. It's ridiculous. I mean, I've never seen anything like that, yeah. but you hear about it in the news all the time, you know. But you know, kudos hey, to you, you for doing that, man. Yeah, thank you. Did you happen to see uh, Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance? Samurai Cop 2 it Deadly all, Vengeance. It, it went all over the world. You had uh, Baleen, Lorraine Landon, Tommy Wozno, Joe Estevez. Yeah, we love it. Directed Lorraine by Landon. Gregory Hatanaka, who signed me for Fit Five Pictures. And that went all over the world. Right now it's in, uh, uh, you can get it on Amazon, it's in Walmart, Best Buy. Now, Checkpoint. I did that for Thomas Churchill, and I look at him, think he could be like the next, uh, you know, the, the director that's Alfred Hitchcock type. I really love this guy, and in that movie, I had, I had scenes with William Forsythe, you had Kenny Johnson, Bill Bill Goldberg, and uh, that should be coming out September October. Cool. Uh, remember the movie Goodfellas? Oh yeah. Well, this one's called Bad Fellows. These were <laughs> directed by William Lee, and these are Black Brothers in there. So they're supposed to do a sequel on that. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time to even do it, but uh, but the one I, I'm really I'm really excited about is uh, Syndicate Smasher. I saw that my online. Yeah. A, I saw the promo. My billing was about the title. Right. Again, you had Larry Lendon, very excellent actress, and we uh, interviewed her. The best no? Did you know that we, we actually interviewed uh, Lorraine Landon um, several months ago? And uh, oh yeah, she's she's awesome, man. Terrific. She's so cool. Yeah, she sent me a whole bunch yeah, of uh, yeah. pictures and stuff and autographs and um, you know it, yeah, it's amazing knowing her. She's so awesome. <laughs> what a nice yeah. They're, they're they're finishing up the special effects on it right now, and cool. uh, they're looking for a, a, a theater to to have the the uh, premiere and the red carpet. Very nice. I'm gonna wear my tux that night. <laughs> I uh, bet you be will, like man. Bond, James Bond. <laughs> yeah, fact, you know I Joe, like you. My uh, manager. I like you in the role as a as a gangster. You know what I mean? Wearing the stripe, the pinstripe oh, suit. Yeah. Or... I 
I must have killed 50 people in uh, Seneca Smasher. It starts out, <laughs> I'm in a 50 caliber, and I'm, I'm wiping those Russians out. <laughs> See the Russians, the Chinese Tong, the Yakuza, and the Mafia, they're all trying to kill me. So, well, I'm not going to let them do that. Why, yeah. I even had a love interest, and, uh, you know, it's all set up for a sequel. That, that picture is going to really do well. I mean, they took their time. They have some excellent people who... Uh, the old mafia guys, and it, it was, you know, Benny Sajana uh, directed, did a great job, and, and Doug, he never could pronounce his, his last name, the writer, <laughs> and uh, I was able to do some improvs on it, and I, I, I just, I tell you, I can't wait for that to come out. That's great. It's Syndicate be, Smasher. That sounds awesome. Syndicate Smasher. All right. And that thing's, yeah, that thing's going to really, really... Well, all that, do well. that one. Uh, yeah, yeah you know, just, Mel, uh, you're uh, you're you're live on the phone here. This is Mel Novak, everybody, uh, and uh, you also you're here with uh, my co-host Jaybird and uh, his. Uh, hey, Jaybird. Yeah, and also hey, uh, Mel. we also got Pops What's in the house happening? here. Hey, Pop. Uh, we also got Pops. He's an 82 year old Korean War vet and an old movie buff and a big book reader. Um, he's Popsy. Yeah, Pops is awesome. Hey, Popsy. Yes, sir. Tell people you ain't you ain't old till you're cold. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah. So uh, we got we got Syndicate Smasher coming up next. So definitely, everybody, keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, Mel, I I got to tell you that being able to talk to you to, to talk to I feel blessed to be able to talk to um and interview people um that that are you know either in music or in uh you know in the movies we talked to larry cohen recently uh you know a very famous uh film producer and um yeah you know you guys just i don't know you just have this gift for some reason i just you know i can't get enough of uh of these interviews and and it's just an honor to talk to you and um go back and 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 watch clips on youtube uh, you know, of movies that I saw when I was, you know, 10 years old in, in 1984. You know what I mean? Thanks a lot for bringing that up. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome, man. <laughs> no, but but for real, though, you know, to, to be yeah. on the same screen with and fight with Chuck Norris and, and Bruce Lee and to still have, you know, seven, eight, nine more uh, uh, movies coming up, man, that's got to be yeah, just, amazing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Amazing. That's, that's that's totally cool. Absolutely. I, uh, definitely keep in touch with us. Um, you know, of course, we're going to check out Syndicate Smasher when it's uh, when it's finally done. Oh yeah, but you're going to love it. Listen, when you come to Tampa, uh, send me a, a, a private message or just call you know call this number. Um, yeah, I'll let my... you know. It's, yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Called Nation, Nation's Fire. Okay, what's uh, it about? And, and uh, Tom Churchill, I think. Uh, remember uh, when uh, what's his name, Fonda and. Uh, they did that uh, bike movie. Um, are you talking about Easy Rider? Easy Rider. Easy Rider. Yeah, I think I think Churchill's doing one with women. But I'm playing uh, uh, probably he said the worst villain I've ever played. I got a I'll have a scar from the top of my head down through my left eye to my jaw, so I have a blue eye and a white eye. Cool. But uh, Churchill's, uh, he's a great writer and an excellent director. And he's a good actor, too. And I enjoyed working. He had a part in uh, Syndicate Smasher. And it was just fun to work with. But to work for, when I worked on a checkpoint with him, everything he wanted I was able to give him. And he, he's very encouraging. He said, man, that was, Mel, no, that was great. Thank you so much. So he, he liked to work with people like that. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes over here, out here you get these, you know, divas and prima donnas, and, and that's just not cool at all. Yeah. Uh, and with, uh, you know, with Gregory Hatanaka, there's one of the pictures where they're, they're going to do, uh, where I play like a Max von Sydow character, where you had that demon-possessed girl, uh, the first one, which scared scared everybody. <laughs> so well, let me ask you something, Mel. What uh, sure? What scares you, my friend? You know what? To be honest with you, uh, I, I've been in places in penitentiaries where they could kill you. There's been hairy times. 
I don't have that kind of fear. I almost died seven times. I should have died seven times. I never had fear there. Uh, probably the only fear I would have is if something would happen. My, I raised my two daughters. I got an incredible relationship with them. Great answer. Uh, but I, I, I just, you know, in Texas there was a inmate who was coming toward me, and he had I couldn't see his hands, so I told him, "Yo, bro, he's walking. Or you might walk toward me. You're not going to walk back." I, I need to see your hand. So here comes a deputy, and, and the guy had a knife. No shit. So they asked him, you know, did, did I say anything? No, I just, I never killed a celebrity. He wanted to kill a celebrity. Wow. But, wow. You know, I, they know, they know. Uh, what's the last thing you want to lose is your eye. I'll take your eye out, then I'll repent. That's amazing, man. You know, that, that must take some serious balls and, and bravery to go in there with the intentions yeah. of changing somebody's life. And then there's yeah. always that one guy that's wanting to make himself famous, you know, or, yeah. wow, prison famous, whatever it yeah. might be. Yeah, you it, was, know. it was funny. I was going into county jail, and they had to lock me in with these inmates. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Death was, you sure you want to go in there? I said, yeah. So he said, uh, as soon as I walked in, one of the, one of the inmates says, oh, did you play that movie with Bruce Lee? And I said, yeah, did you all know I'm, I'm in a martial arts hall of fame in London? Had no problem after that. I just had to establish that. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta let them know. I mean, that's that's funny, Mel. I worked in a in a restaurant for about five years, four and a half years, and our general manager is in the uh, martial arts hall of fame. Uh, I guess here in the U.S., Jaybird, is that right? Yeah. And uh, he let me know immediately, and uh, he was one of those types of people that was like an alpha male, you know, that was always a. Uh, very, very uh, strict, uh, stay by the rules, by the book kind of thing, and uh, would not take any crap from anybody. And a lot of the employees at this very busy, very big restaurant would get mad and say things, you know, like, oh, I just like to punch him one time in the face. And I would, you know, and, and a yeah. few of the other old timers there like me would say, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Believe me. Even though he's in his 60s, yeah. he's still he's still got it. I'm sure you still got it yeah. too, Mel. <laughs> uh, look, I'm the nicest guy in the world until you do something against my daughters or yeah. Like Joe Williamson, that's my best friend. He's my manager. Yeah, he's a great well, I ain't going to let nobody do anything against him. No. Uh, I, I, and this is how I am when I, when I have a relationship with, uh, with a lady. And, uh, you know, right now I, I do have one. This gal was co-starring with me in uh, Shailene's Fighters. And, and then it's going to be in uh, Nightwalk, which should start soon, hopefully. I told him, you got to get it going, uh, Sandy Penny. So you protect people. you got to do that. Yeah. You've got too many bullies. Yeah. And, and you see that on a set. You see that everywhere. But uh, when I'm on a set, you know, it's business. I'm going to give them the best possible character and role. I'm always on time. I don't, I don't, in, in Sydney to Smash, I didn't miss one line, one word. Nice. Because you got to be prepared. And you got that showing respect to the people who hired you, and uh, and the writers and everything else, and also, you know, my manager. Uh, Absolutely. You know, got you got to have that have that respect. And see, in the world, there's not much love anymore. And, and uh, you know, just humility is a strength, not a weakness. So that's where I, that's where I am, and. Uh, you're a man of integrity, I, you know, and, and integrity and work ethics. Mel Novak, a man with work ethics. Is that rare nowadays or what? You know, it, it, to me, it seems like it is. You know, I, I see so much opportunity out there for people and I see so many just mess ups. You know what I mean? People that people that just don't have that that edge, you know, and uh, obviously Mr. Novak uh, here. Still, after what it's you started in 1971 and you're still taking these roles. I bet you still. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I bet you still show up and memorize your lines and are on oh, time yeah. I'm to on, this day. You know, like like clockwork. There you go. It's a, it's a last picture, uh, like in, in uh, Syndicate Smasher. I, mean, I had a ton of dialogue. Didn't miss one, and I had seven different guns. Even when I was shooting <laughs> people, and that was fun. So, <laughs> that's. I think that might be the clip of the week right there. Mel Novak saying, "And I was shooting people." And that was fun. <laughs> yeah. I told them, you know, the, the, the one day where I killed these four Yakuzis with a uh, Uzi, you pull the trigger with a Uzi and you go, thrr, thrr. so I killed two of them right off and 
and the leader just missed me, and I shot him, and I went over. It wasn't a script, and I kicked him. <laughs> and as I was walking out, side of my eye, I shot, and I turned real fast. And the guy sliding down the wall, he's the one who killed my girlfriend. So I put the, put the gun right by his eye. And oh the next day, I didn't have any shooting in the movie. And I'm ready to do a service with the, in the L.A. County Jail, which is the worst jail in the country. And I had about oh. 70 inmates. Yeah. And I told them, well, when I start talking, uh, giving you the message, uh, I don't, any of you talk, I'm going to put you out right away. Go back to your custom-made cell. And I said, you know, I don't like those Japanese Yakuza, that mafia. They think they're, they think they're really tough. I, if I killed four of them yesterday, <laughs> I had like a two minute, two minute pregnant pause. And they're looking at each other thinking, but this is a chaplain. He keeps killing people. <laughs> then I said, but I use blanks. I keep telling you guys, you use real bullets. You run a penitentiary. I'm going home. And one of the black brothers goes, you funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. But, Jaybird's uh, uh, shooting blanks too. So, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but you know, I, I really, I really enjoy working. You know, people think it's a job. It's tough. I got to do this. Shut your mouth. You got, you got a million people who would do anything to just get in the movie. Yeah, how about so, it? So, I don't. I don't like complaining. And complaint is poverty. Gratitude is riches. I mean, there you go. You, yeah. you get a role like that, and uh, it's people don't count their blessings. And you know, you get a, it's like Gregory Hatanaka, just you know, sign me for these five pictures. I mean, you talk about blessed, being blessed, and man, oh man. I'll tell you what, I, I completely agree with you, and I have the same philosophy, and uh, that's something that we both definitely have in common. I feel blessed. Uh, every day, excuse me, every yeah. day that, uh, you know, not just having my daughters, my kids, but uh, my fiance and uh, being uh, close with my, my, my family, my immediate family. I actually live next door to my parents. Yeah. I'm so lucky to be able to have, uh, afford that's, to do that. Oh, that's a blessing. It's great. It's great for the gone. kids. I, I understand. I apologize. Uh, sorry about that. I, you know, it is what it is, man. But, um, you know, yeah. my role is to uh, take care of them as they get older and um, give them yep. the opportunity to see their grandkids, you know. So it's a really a win-win for everybody. And, you know, I, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm not the only uh, person out there that uh, is soft like that. You know, a lot of people uh, oh. act real tough. But in reality, that's, you know, that's really what, what living's all about, you know. And Jaybird here, he takes care of his dad uh, better than anybody good, ever could. Good you know? for you. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. You know that. I've gotten uh, major awards in martial arts, in the movie industry, in the, in the prison Skid Row ministry. My favorite award, I was Mother of the Year at the Brownies. <laughs> really? <laughs> Brownies is right before Girl Scouts, and I, they never did it before or after. And, and then in September, I'm getting an award, Living Legend Award which is really prestigious. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm going to say, well, I, that'll, that'll be out right up there with my Living Legend Award. <laughs> well, listen, Mel, but, uh, um, I, don't, I mean, I hate to cut it kind of short, but we are up on a hard break here, and uh, I don't want to take up your entire evening. I know it's getting close to dinner time over there. No, I, I put it out for you whatever time you wanted. Yeah, thank you so much for calling in tonight. Um, you know, and, and definitely everybody listening, uh, and, and those of you that listen later on the download, um, go check out Syndicate Smasher. That's going to be the next uh, Mel Novak hit coming out soon. Yeah. Here. Um, hey, listen. Check, check my website out. They can see a lot of the movies and what pictures is, uh, and stuff. What's your website? <laughs> Already been MelNovak.com. MelNovak.com, just like that. Yeah. Awesome. You're also on and, Wikipedia, uh, and um, there's a bunch of promo reels of you on uh, on YouTube. Which yeah, is pretty Joe cool. Williamson got all that stuff. Joe Williamson's the man. We should give a shout-out to Joe Williamson. He's been working with me. Um, you know, booking talent on our show for uh, almost a year now, about, I don't know, six or yeah. eight months, something like that. What a nice guy. I've had well, so many conversations with him on the phone, and uh, yeah. we just shoot the breeze before we even talk business. You know, that's how nice of a guy oh, he is. Oh, yeah. You know? I, yeah, he's my best friend, and uh, that's great. I don't use that term loosely. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acquaintances, but I don't keep that many people close in my in my circle. That's the uh, Joe Williamson Management Company. That's his his company. Is that right? I gave him that name. 
<laughs> there you go. You know, Jaybird gave uh, the name to this show, the Kevin Holly Show. I wanted to make up something funny, you know, because we do a lot of comedy and parodies and prank phone calls and things like that. We're all in our forties, but we act like we're eighteen. And uh, he insisted that we call it the Kevin Holly Show. And I was yeah. really, uh, yeah, I was kind of scared at first. I, I didn't want to do it, but hey, why not, man? <laughs> it's it's cool. and also also encourage your, your people to follow you. Go on IMDb. Okay, you'll see a lot of stuff on me. And you're going to see all those pictures that I'm signed for. There's like 12 of them. Awesome. And, and, and they're in pre-production and uh, getting ready. IMDB and under Mel Novak. Let them check it out. Excellent. Everybody's got that right there. Awesome. And uh, Mr. Novak, yeah. real quick, what's the name of that film you're doing in Tampa again? When, in about a month, you said? Uh, Are you allowed uh, to say? Or? Pacific uh, Nations Fire. Nations Fire. Awesome. I will definitely check yeah. that out, and if I could come down there and shake your hand um, and, and just oh, say sure. hello, I would be so honored. That yeah. would be great, man. Oh, my God. I would, yeah, I would bring your kids. How old are your kids? Oh, I would love to. They would enjoy that. They're uh, eight years old and 11-year-old, uh, two, my two uh, daughters. So I used to work great. right yeah, I have two, and, I have two daughters, too, and, uh, and that's nothing greater. I mean, I have a great relationship, and, the, you know, I was there all the time, I loved them unconditionally, and uh, never broke a promise to them. There you go. So I'm trying my, my best, man, and, and I'm right there as well good, with you. Good, I'm never, good. I'm never turning you. back. Everything I do is for my kids, man. You know what I mean? And, that's and it. That's, that's it. Yeah, you know, you got to be yeah, your dad, my, you know. My mate left when they were 7 and 10, so. There you go. But, uh, I, 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 you know, they're, they're, they're doing great, and uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Well, we're blessed for having so, you, Mel. Thank you so much for calling, and uh, please don't be a stranger to the show. Um, and uh, keep anytime you want me stuff. on, all you gotta do is, is let let Joe know. Okay, and I will be there for you. Awesome. Okay. Thanks again, Mel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mel knows all right. everybody. Thank hey, we'll you talk very to you much, soon, Mel. sir. Good talking. Okay. To you, God man. bless you all. It. God bless you. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye, Mel. Ah, oh, there you go, everybody. What Mel a Novak. Great oh. dude, man. Wow. Yeah, he's a stud. That guy. Oh my God. Definitely check out. You know, I got something pulled up right now here. Um, before we take our, our first break here, check this out. This is a quick promo reel of Mel Novak. How'd you get him? Hell, it was easy. Say, that's a, that's a nice-looking watch. Hey, Tuna, this one of them that works uh, underwater? He's choking that guy out. <laughs> That's Black Belt Jones right there. Here's Chuck Norris. Now you think these girls here. I mean, they're not just trained physical therapists. No, no, by no means. In fact, no, they can talk, they can, they can do a lot of things. I mean, they're specialists in relating to people in any way you can think of. Everybody in San Francisco, I want to check out where Melhar is. This is Tom Horn. Check this out. tough. I understand he's copying your style, Jim. Talking about a boxer. Couldn't land a punch. Hey, that new punch of yours is the greatest in the game. Hey, Tex, you ever hear of a hook punch? No, I haven't. Well, we're toasting the man with the greatest hook punch in the world. Barkey, give Tex some champagne so he can toast with us. Jim? You brought a touch of class to this game. And a lot of pretty ladies. <laughs> hey, hey. hey, Tex, you ready? What are we toasting? We're toasting the next heavyweight champion of the world, Gentleman Jim Corbett. Well, you've got to fight for it yet, so he ain't champion. Why don't we toast something interesting? Like what? <laughs> well, like Geronimo there. Let me ask you something, Tex. Who's Geronimo next to Jim Corbett? Geronimo's a man so great that Corbett there would have to stand on his mother's shoulders to kiss his ass. <laughs> this is Samurai Cop 2 right here. Hello, my followers. We need your participation, Mr. Marshall. Jay, could you move over this little bit? No, I, I can't. <laughs> you must join the regiment. There you go, Pops. I made it bigger. Vitamins and herbs. Very good for you. I take 50 a day. No thanks. All right, get ready for the uh, game of... Game How of about death. your trip to Berlin, Stick? It went pretty much as you figured. 
This is him fighting Bruce Lee, dude. Are you kidding me? crap dude that was a fight scene between mel novak and bruce lee that was pretty awesome that was badass dude he's all quite a dude man hey pops can you give me a little bruce lee little (laughs) come on no i'm not into that all right all right what'd you guys think of mel novak badass huh yeah quite a dude man been there done it man he sure has man yeah and you know working with the prison ministry and all that and being in the la county jail really that's got to be ridiculous dude yeah what a stud, man. Uh, well, thank you, Mel Novak, for uh, joining us on the show here. And uh, we're going to take our first break, guys. And uh, we'll come back here in about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so with more of the Kevin Holly Show. Uh, I see we have some names up there for the new Chuck Mobile, too. So Yeah, Vape and Chill uh, yeah. says the van name is easy. It's simply the Chuck Wagon. <laughs> That's pretty freaking good. It's pretty Ooh, original. Okay, how about that? Glick. Glick. The Chuck Wagon. I love yeah. it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, don't way know to go, that. Glick. It's uh, how simple of a freaking joke how easy can you make it you fucking <laughs> hack you periscope hack is that all you got the chuck wagon okay what are you running out of content there you badass you pimp oh hey ladies and gentlemen it's my badass pimp friend uh this is ryan hoppy and that's my badass pimp friend uh chris glick with the the hack of a, a shock jock piece of shit joke right there uh the chuck wagon way to go how you about, hack <laughs> how about the re chucky lady Read Chucky later. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. All right, let's take our first break and come back. Man, I'm floored by Mel Novak. Holy crap, what a cool dude. All right, we'll be right back with more of the Kevin Holly Show. The hotline, if you want to call in the second hour, 727-237-6010. We will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm tired I'm of hearing sorry. that, man. Jay's tickling me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I'm eating a double cheeseburger. Oh, uh, hold on a second. A double cheeseburger? I'm eating a double cheeseburger. Hey, hold on a right second. Now. We got a uh, homeless Someone Chuck. Someone that ain't in the- We got homeless Chuck on the line, everybody. What's going on, Chuck? <laughs> I'm the man that used to live in a box. <laughs> hey, man, every time you've been calling me. I'm the man that used to have a box. <laughs> What's going on, brother, love? You're the man with a box, a man box. Hey, man. <laughs> I, You know, you've been calling me all week, and I apologize for not taking your call. It's just like you're, you're catching me at the worst times, either when I'm in an interview or on the boat or at, like, 2 in the morning. What the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Homeless Chuck. Or when he's... Or oh, when... Chuck, I'm the man who used to live in a box. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Hey, hey, I'm changing my goddamn name, man, too. Uh, you know, I'm going to be showing up soon, and I love the calls, I love the show, I love you guys, I miss you dearly, and I simply don't understand why you're not here helping me fucking pack. What, fudge pack? You know why, I don't do that. <laughs> because it only takes two, right? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many Polish guys does it take to fudge pack? Just two. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense, but it's good. Well, we're going we're gonna to vote in the second hour tonight uh, for a new name for your van and for you, dude. So you're going to be. No, our, I already got a new name for the van. Oh, we'll decide that, Chuck. <laughs> what is? What's oh, your I, I, I figured I have no rules, no regulations, and no virginity when I'm around you guys. What the? <laughs> what What is your new name for your van, Chuck? Sylvia. No. no. Boo. No, really? No. Really? It's silver. And it's a girl's name. All right, all right, I still got a $25 Visa card out there hanging out there, man. Right. You know, I'm currently packing. You know me, I got all jammed up. You know, just today, two days away from closing, I finally get a uh, a confirmation on the loan. My nice. real estate agent says this is the most entertaining process he's ever gone through. I, I've been bitching and moaning with people all goddamn day long. I even threw a little bit of fit at the day job, and they all looked over at me. And I go, well, you know, I am what I am, finally. So they finally got to see the real homeless Chuck, man. Yeah, uh, hey. well, you know, I've seen you know, And I, I guess the comment that got him, I, I go, when I got off the phone, and they all looked at me, I go, don't even ask anything. I just need to find a place to bury a body. 
Homeless. <laughs> homeless. Let me homeless. Let me tell you that Chris Glick already came up with a better name, way better name for your van. Dude. Still up for vote. actually Argento. Argento means uh, silver in Italian. My buddy Sal that owns Argento's a dynamite is Italian establishment. If anybody ever wants to get your feet is on, is he paying us? Is yeah. he paying us? Is he paying us? Yes, yeah, 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 he's paying me for the bike fest that I'm doing, and I also would like to plug the October bike fest is coming up on the Cody River real soon. Hell yeah, 2016 the weekend of the 7th, 8th, and 9th, 50,000 bikers, and I'm doing all the promotion work. Hey, Chuck. Great, great, great. The uh, ACW is doing a live uh, two-day uh, cage match wrestling event at the Bike Fest, and we're, we've are we been invited to broadcast live there. Oh, jumping baby Jesus, we're going to tie this into a one hell of a goddamn freak show, aren't we? All right, listen, yeah. hey, listen, real quick, before you say anything, Chris Glick's already come up with a way better name for your van, new name for your band. Microphone. Your van should be the Chuck Wagon. <laughs> no, no, my God. That's like just that. too easy, too. No, I, 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 I also know awesome. about the, 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 the Velvet Fog. How about the Velvet Fog? That's what they used to call the one vocalist. Uh, oh, my God. Who used to be the Velvet Fog? And then I was often thinking about uh, Smokey. But, um, no, I, I like Sylvia because of the whole song. Sylvia says. That's gay. How about the Candy thing? Van? Oh, well, listen, we're going to get into this in the second hour. Listen, Chuck, we'll call you back in the second or third hour or something like that. We're, t- we're up way yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm punch packing it as much as I can right now. Thanks for calling, Chuck. We'll talk to you again tonight, okay? Please and thank you. All right, bro. Bye-bye. See you. Homeless Chuck, everybody. Homeless Chuck in the house tonight, Soon making his to appearance. Be no more homeless. Soon to be uh, something else. I'm not sure exactly what yet. But all right, we're going to take that break. Thanks again to Mel Novak for calling in. And uh, we'll be back here with more of the Kevin Holly Show in just a few minutes. So keep listening. Shama the in Gush meet in the Kevin Holly Show. Shama the in Gush meet in the Kevin Holly Show. Shama the in Gush meet in the Barnabas Kevin Holly. We in the Bay, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the coco gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes in the bay. See, I'm from California, out in the East Bay, where we grow pody ropey, over where we stay. Call it Killer Cali, potency strawberry. There's no releasing morsels, kick me some dubbery. And drink some 40 water like it was 93. The corner store, my friend, evidently. My white tea smelling like black and mild smoke. Cigarettes and bomb, there ain't much hope. But see, I need my vices to cope, nigga. Roll with block living in the town, so critical. It's so hot with no sun, what the hell is going on? Explanation you can tell. Hey, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the coco gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes in the bay. That's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the coco gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes. This atmospheric pressure is pushing on my dome. Cause everywhere I turn, chickadees in need of bone. Well, why not give it to them? Cause some don't qualify. But the ones that do get bamboo in a loving ride. Like a 9.5. Booty Nui, Susu Perkin. Body banging, lips juicy like they used to working. Any compi not to white or black or island passion. Latina, Indian to Asian over here we smashing. Then speak that freaky tales like short in the day. And illustrate them in my rhyme so you can picture the way. We get down over here from Coco to Skull, Valley Joe to Sand, whole nickel dime, you know. We in the bay, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the Coco gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes in the bay, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the coco gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes. See, I got back from the islands in that state of mind. Got caught slipping on the soil with no heat of mind. But felt a nine to my dome, fool, what you got? 
I'm back in Cali now. Damn, I forgot. That is gunplay, we play for keeps. So cold when funk is deep. Not enough Indians and way too many damn cheeks. This fights and turf war. Host slaps and much more. Four fours and four fives. Busting through your front door. Breaking invasions if you push in that way. Somewhere along the line, you made a mistake. But that's damn near everywhere you go. I'm just telling you my story so you know. We in the Bay, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the cold, cold, gone. Off whatever I got, I'm comfy in my spot. Drinking and smoking and riding rhymes in the Bay, that's where I reside. My coconut shack in the back of the burg up in the cold, cold, gone. Off whatever I
Johnny got sky holes right in the roof right off the floor. Turn me. Oh, Dad. Hey. Howdy, girl. Yes, stay. Hey. What the fuck is that? Hey, what the fuck is that? Hey. Howdy, girl. It was you. Oh, Dad. Bring a bang. What? Why you gotta sleep with my dad? Hey, boy, how's your chick? Nina. Why don't you have some dirty hot sex with me? It ain't like I'm asking you to give it up for free.
Live with more of the Kevin Holly Show. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Pops is live on the mic right now. He's got lots to talk about. Jaybird is back live as well with a lot to talk about. Jaybird, you can tighten that little screw on that mic right there. I know it's all new. The it's facing me on my side. It's kind of like a T. There you go. Uh, we got new microphones up in here. Everybody sounds great tonight. How about Mel Novak, dude? What a stud! Thank you, Mr. Novak, for calling in tonight. I had a blast talking to him, man. I thought he was super cool. You guys are listening to the Harvest's new album right now. Um, I just, you know, I'm probably going to play that every week for until I get tired of it, which will probably never happen. <laughs> oh, so cool. Man, so welcome back to the Kevin Holly Show, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this is episode 55. Uh, we are killing it right now. Killing Dude, we're, we're going to be older than Pop soon, man. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, recently we got picked up by the uh, IRN network, and uh, that's gonna be that's in the works, man. We're gonna be uh, in another avenue here, and that's gonna be really really cool. We're on there with Hoppy Hour, which is awesome. And uh, you know, in September they're gonna announce the uh, best of the Bay, best local podcast, best internet radio station. I don't think we won, but uh, hopefully we got uh, up there. You know what I mean? We'll see. Uh, I don't know how it all works. It's our first year doing it, so maybe we got uh, an honorable mention or something. Maybe something, maybe, man. We can volunteer as well for that awards ceremony, um, but I'm not sure what the dates are, whatnot, what's going on with that, so we'll see how that all goes, man. But That's all good, man. Uh, definitely also uh, this Friday night at Venom Back Room Bar and Grill uh, over here in Port Ritchie. Check out Slingshot Robot. They're opening up for uh, Pretty Boy Floyd, an 80s uh, cover band. Slingshot Robot's going to take the show, man. They're going to kill it, dude. I was so. just gonna say, why are they opening up for an eighty or an I eighty? Know. Why are they not the the venue? I don't know why, man. They just played the Hard Rock last week. This, yeah, this I weekend. saw that. Oh my god, dude! How cool is that? They played a three and a half hour set at the Hard Rock Cafe and Casino, dude. That's so cool. They're really getting some traction. This band, man. I was listening to their uh, CD in my car, 
uh, for like every day since they gave it to me, since Al gave me that CD. It's actually my mom's CD. She won it <laughs> in, the, in the contest or whatever. But, um, <laughs> you I, never gave it to her? No, man. She just got back into town wow, two days ago. You're horrible, man. I know. I'll give it to her, you know. But, dude, it's like, it's pretty heavy, man. Um, the last song, Goodbye World. Oh, my God. What a great tune, dude. It's amazing. It really is. Um, you know that it's it's just Doug Bailey and a banjo on that last song. Really? It's on freaking real how good it is. It, dude, I know I say it a lot, but it really did make the hair on my arms stand up. Like, every time I listen to it, I get the chills, dude. What's the name of that? It's called Goodbye World, and uh, I might be able to pull it up really quick here before we even get into anything. Um, let's see if it's on YouTube. Otherwise, it's in my car. Uh, Goodbye World Slingshot Robot. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Holy crap, man. we got a lot to talk about here. At the, yeah, uh, because I have something that I really wanted to bring up. Here it is, man. Hold on. I, I, you guys, you got to just, you got to hear this really quick. I mean, yeah, I, I would be doing a, a disservice because the Stillhouse Shakers play, uh, you know, uh, fiddles and banjos and harmonicas. And this is like right up that they're like our house band, the Stillhouse Shakers. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I just, I. I never knew how talented Doug Bailey really is. You know, he played bass for so long because Taz was uh, on tour with the band Wasp doing lighting and stuff. And uh, I get this CD, and I never heard this song from Slingshot Robot before. And uh, it's, these, these are all originals that they wrote, right? Oh, yeah. Listen to this, man. This, this will make the hair in your arms stand up, man. Looking at the pictures of the past that's staring back at me Knowing that my life is just a series of the roads I take Someday I'll be nothing but a memory I hope you'll be there with me my final day Happy, full of dreams and aspirations. Man, I couldn't wait to see what I become. All the things I would achieve. Things you always took for granted I can't believe I could not see The things that always kept us close Holding on to family love and hope I 
jackass voice, man. Man, did you guys get the chills when he was getting all loud like that? Yeah, yeah pops, man. Is that so good, dude? Holy crap, man. I got the chills, but I think it had to do with the ghost that's uh, haunting <laughs> this. Um... I just, I can't no, say. No, that was awesome, man, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, that was good. I can't say enough about those guys, man, you know, and, and just Doug's voice, man. It just, it just, ah, oh, just something about it, dude. And the dude's just such a regular dude, you know what I mean? You know, he's got five kids, little tiny kids. Oh, my God. Totally cool. Anyway, so you sound upset that none of them are yours, bro. <laughs> no, I love my kids, man. They love Slingshot Robot, dude. You know what's so cool? Check this out, man. I put it on Facebook. If anyone wants to go and check out our uh, our Facebook page, it's uh, simply facebook.com forward slash the Kevin Holly Show. And uh, I took my daughter over to the orthodontist to get her. Uh, she got a little bit of a uh, snaggle tooth kind of thing going on in the front teeth, you know. And so uh, we're thinking about getting her braces, even though she's only eight years old, just because I don't want her to get bullied at school, you know, and. I want to pull that tooth back in. And uh, we were there, and, and they gave her a clipboard. And it had this cute little, uh, like, bio. And it said, our kids are our, our friends. Our patients are just, you know, they're our friends, too. So please have your child fill out this questionnaire, you know. <clears throat> so she filled it out. And it said, like, uh, you know, my name is blank, but you can call me blank. And she put my name, you know, she put her name, and you can call me what her name is. You know, it's pretty cute. She goes, all through this stuff, right? My favorite book is this. My favorite color is that, you know, and it said my favorite song is, and she put Breaker Bar from The Harvest. She spelled it right and everything, and I was like, are you kidding me? She put her favorite song is Breaker Bar by The, by the Harvest. I, I couldn't believe that. I thought that was totally awesome. That is cool. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I'll load that up for later, um, but oh, so let's get into this, Jaybird. What the hell did you do uh, the last couple of days? Because I hadn't heard from you. Were you like a hermit? You're like locked up in your house or something? Oh my god, dude! Yeah, I, I totally. Um, I had the new Harry Potter book, bro. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Oh, Potter. Yeah, Potter. Potter. Hey Potter. man, do not send you. I don't even know what that means. It's a. He just got burnt. I, I got just burnt. Start, I just started you on fire. Are we playing so, po- uh, Pokemon? Yeah, no, 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 no. It's totally freaking different. Don't Ma- Magic the Gathering. Oh, you're going to really piss me off now, what, man. Is this Dungeons and Dragons, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry. Carry you're on. You're not now. into Harry Potter? I'm not into Harry Potter at all. Oh. It's Harry Potter, okay? The oh. greatest wizard <laughs> to ever live. Do not make fun of him. I apologize. And his last book that came out was just outstanding, dude. Well, it was kind of it was based on like the screenplay that they did which carried on in their lives uh, 19 after 19 years after the great battle of Hogwarts. And um What? Go on, I'm Nin- sorry. 19 years after the Great Battle of Hogwarts where Voldemort died. Okay. And now they have kids and their kids are in school and stuff. It was it was really outstanding, man. Now, how old is Harry Potter in this movie? Oh, he's pushing like 40, something like that. Really? Your age. Really? Yeah. And that's no joke. No joke. Let, let, me, actually, let, me, let me tell Kevin something that he needs to know. Please. J.K. Rawlings was a uh, uh, single mother with two kids. On welfare, hmm. and she researched a book, Harry Potter, and she wrote it, and it went up bananas. It's sold like great crazy. She ended up writing eight books, all of them are movies, and she became a billionaire through the movies and the books that she wrote, and is raising her. I think she since got married, but she went from rags to riches writing these books. And they're about wizards and, and, and muggles who are parents that aren't wizards having kids who are wizards and blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, so you got a little biography about what Harry Potter is about. Okay. And the fact that J.K. Rollins, the creator of Harry Potter, went from, from welfare to becoming a, 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 a billionaire. Well, actually... You know, this is the one thing. I am a very uh, big-time Harry Potter fan. I love the thing. J.K. Rowling's to me, is kind of a cunt. Um, <laughs> but having said that... She's a mother of two. She's, well, she got your kid to read, and he, yeah. he sent her something, and she wrote him... She sent him a letter which she signed, so she, she, she's... But having said that, I would challenge any one of our fans to a Harry Potter 
trivia test any day of the week. Yeah, that's they're, riveting, they're, riveting radio right there. <laughs> Glick says in the chat room, what the fuck, I'm going to watch paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fuck everybody, man. I'll tell you what. So what did you do? Like you were locked Vada in your... Vada Kedavra on all you guys, man. What is that? No, 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 no. I just wanted Kevin to know what you were talking Stupefy. about. Stupefy. Stupefy. Huh? Go ahead. What is, I, what challenge, is, I challenge anybody to a Harry Potter what trivia is Vada contest Lamada anyway. Mean? What is Vada Lamada? Kedavra, I just killed you, dude. That's what? a killing spell. A spell. Stupefy. Stupefy. What does that mean? You're stunned. You're kind of just held in suspense for a moment, so. I can't talk. I'm stunned. So, is anybody. That, was that that anybody song, ever, Stupefied? From no, no, okay. no, no. It has if nothing to do anybody with wants to challenge me, any bit of Harry Potter trivia, any day of the week, I will take you on one on one and I'll put money on it. Uh, uh, drop the mic. Boom. Yeah, and Sounds like anyone that takes that challenge up, beware. This guy is really an expert on Harry Potter. All right, now, that brings me into something else. We can go back to Harry Potter if anybody feels like they have the balls to test my skills. But it brings me up to something that... Sorry. <laughs> brings me up to something that has been overplayed in the media, but I really feel like I want my end of it out there. All right, and this has to do with the Olympic swimmers. Hold on a second. I'm getting stupefied right now. I'm still stunned from your Harry Potter Stupefy. Oh, yeah. And I watched some Harry Potter movies. Ah, and it sucked. And I read a stupid Harry Potter book. Ah, and I thought it really sucked really bad. Ah, and I thought Harry Potter was a faggot. And I like porn I, uh, with Harry Potter. swear to God, I'm so ready to throw this microphone at you right now. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm stupefied right now. I don't know what to do, Jay Bird. Yeah. I mean, you, you locked yourself in your Crucio. room. What Crucio. Is, what is Crucio? He's letting me out of your trance. Now you can act normal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that what that means for real? No, you're in. Yeah. You'd be in suffering pain right now if I actually did a real Crucio curse on you. I'm in suffering pain right now because I don't like this fucking song either. Oh yeah. Why did you play it? Because it's stupefied, pops. Can't you Gonna it? read it? They stole Get this from the Harry pie. Potter. Oh, yeah. Jay Bird read a book I didn't know you could read. <laughs> anyway, I went golfing with Jay, and he was like, this is my Harry Potter. Check it out. And I was like, not again, please, man. And then he shot a deuce on the 7th, and it was a birdie. I believe it was a cockatoo? Cockatiel? Uh a swallow? Was it a swallow? I think it was a swallow. Anyway, carry on, Jaybird. I'm sorry. All right, All no, no, no. Well, obviously, um, you have no <laughs> sense of real um, <laughs> literature, knowledge, or anything to do with... Um, well, quit casting great, spells on me, man. Uh, not until you uh, start coming to grips with reality. Uh, like Jay's dick when he sees a Voldemort. <laughs> I don't even know what a Voldemort is, man. Uh, I got to read a book. You do need, they have a pop-up book? You definitely do. You definitely need to. Do they have, like, Harry Potter for dummies? Like, Cliff Notes or something? Yeah, no. No? It's way beyond your tech they, note. They have movies, though, right? I could watch a Harry Potter movie? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Come on, you've seen the Harry Potter I've movies. I've seen, like, five seconds of it. Are you for real? I'm for real, man. All, All right, right, we're going to binge. We're going to binge watch. You don't work tomorrow, right? No, I do work tomorrow. All right, Colin's sick. We're going to go. I got them all <laughs> recorded at the house. Really? We're going to go binge watch. Do you it takes really like have 24. Them? Yes, every one. We, really? We yes. got eight, 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 eight of them. That's all of them. That's eight. God, you guys are so homosexual. Oh, my God. How are you? Okay, maybe I'm Dude. wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Harry Potter's really cool. If I had an invisibility but you're still cloak. Homosexual. Uh, an invisibility cloak? I don't want to know what happens if you do that to me, dude. What kind of spell do you have for get, making me invisible and. Or making you invisible. Well, there's not, there's not really spells to make you self-invisible. You have to have an invisibility cloak. Um, I mean, there's different things you could do. You could disapparate, which would make you, you know, disappear. Do they have any, like, but uh, you would end up in spells? another location. It's not that you're still there. Would I end up in a jungle with monkeys? Like, maybe macaques? Um, I could I could probably come up with a spell that would feed you a ton of cocks, but... Uh, <laughs> what? You get That's called Tinder. <laughs> Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> oh, whoa. <Morning. laughs> I'm erect. Why don't you tell us about the book and 
the com- coming movie. Sure, I would love to, Pops. Thank you. The book sucks ass, and it's boring as hell. Oh, and I, 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 oh, I was asking MJ. Jay, not Oh, you. okay, sorry, sorry. Go on, carry on. It's actually a screenplay. The way it's written out, it was done in um, London in July of this year, and now, it's already a book now. Is it so scary? It's kind of, you mean... No, it's a screenplay. I didn't say scary, no, dickweed. I'm asking, is it scary or people like... To somebody like you that's scared of their own shadow? Yeah, you'd probably piss yourself. That's not but, a shadow. But an eight-year-old boy would look at it and be like, all right, this is really cool. <laughs> Just like I did. Uh, you've been officially removed from the vape world order, the VWO, dude. I guess. Come on, dude. What's the matter with vaping and pottering at the same time? Vape and vape, potter. Vape, potter, and chill, bro. Vape and potter. I like that. You should do your own scope, dude. Vape and potter. You can sit there and vape and read, and read Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> people, dude. And when I do a spell, I just oh, pull out a big brilliant. pot of smoke. That's brilliant, man. Come uh, on, Glick. That's awesome, dude. Well, you know what? You're going to put Glick like in his place with that, dude. I think you should do uh, that yes. right now, man. You yeah. need a better phone to be able to periscope from, though. You yeah, can't use that Obama no. flip phone for that, dude. Well, Maybe you could cast a spell on your phone and turn it turn it into like a Galaxy S6. Probably S6. could. Yeah, that would be cool. Oculus or something like that. I don't, yeah, there's, there's no, a spell Oculus. out there. That's what I was thinking, Oculus for sure. Oculus would be a great spell course, for my yes. phone. Yeah. And then vape right afterwards. <laughs> 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 fucking weirdo. <laughs> Screw off, man. All right, whatever. You want to fight me? You gotta fight me, uh, dude. You do. You cannot tell. I got so many spells. You have nothing. You I've have been watching ACW wrestling, bro. I will pile drive you yeah. through a table. I'm you wouldn't you. even get close to me, dude. I'd I think, knock you out twenty uh, feet away. Damn. What about Pokemon balls? What if I throw a Pokemon ball at you? Yeah. You probably like getting balls thrown at you. What? I'll show you my balls if you want. Is that a cheap joke? Am I gonna get made fun of for that? Every time I say, oh, "Pops is raising his hand." Yes, sir. Kevin. Yes, sir. Do you know who Doctor Dan? Lieutenant Dan from uh, Monska. <laughs> what? Doctor Dan. Oh, Doctor Don. Doctor Doctor Don. Pops is breaking out some paperwork here. Uh oh. Oh, look out! Dude. I love when he does this. Read that shit, Jay. Doctor Donald Henderson. Do you know Doctor Donald Henderson was? I do not. Well, probably not too many people do. Okay. But it's pathetic that they don't because of what he did. Uh, He died last week at the age of 87. Okay. And he is the guy that, do you know what smallpox used to be? It still is smallpox, yeah. Well, he is the guy that just about eliminated it from our society by coming up with a vaccine for it. Okay, now Sean Raz would not want to hear about this vaccine, but uh, carry on. Sean Raspatello, our conspiracy theorist uh, radio host friend. No, well, he's a, he's against vaccines. Is that, that yeah, one? he doesn't believe in vaccines, man. Yeah. Well, what about uh, polio, man? Does yeah. he believe in polio? Well, that was know. that wasn't that that was a sugar lump you took for that, but <laughs> that was salt. But anyhow, uh, I I just thought that this guy, what he did, I just heard about it, and I thought that our listeners should give this guy a, a heads up or. You know, I appreciate because, that. Because yeah. uh, po- po- uh, smallpox killed lots of people. and uh, Yeah. You know what, Pops? I'm glad you brought that up because you're saving the show from Harry Potter talk right now. Well, it was getting to the point where it needed some help. Another <laughs> thing, as long as I've, I'm here and I've got your attention. Yeah, you always have my attention. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, I know that you have some Italian heritage. I do, yes. And, of course... Uh, your uh, your He's a your, home, your home country had a hell of a tornado yesterday. Yeah. The earthquake, actually. Earthquake. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, tornado. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was a Sharknado, actually. Well, whatever. Mistaken. Anyhow, it's a freaking earthquake, man. I have it right here, guys. If you want to do this, okay. Earthquake. Uh, the last I heard, 120 people dead and many, many still unaccounted for. What do you think's worse, pops, a tornado or or an earthquake? Well, whatever hits me is the scale worst. of it. That's a that's a horrible question, man. Well, you know what? We're real on this show. What I'm show, wondering you know? is if if um that imagine would be, all that the salads that, that, that was, that, that was going to be my next question. What would you prefer to get hit by a earthquake or a tornado? And then you'd have to figure it out. 
That's a, yeah, that's through, a great deal. Like my shit, a bit, what, through mental telepathy, it's because of all the spells, man. Jay put spells yeah. on me, and now I'm in your head. Well, you know? now, 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 now things are going to improve for you. Literally, man. I'm in his head. Maybe you're, maybe things will improve for you. Well, the beatings will continue yeah. until morale. We'll, we'll have to take click. We'll have to check it and see if Kevin improves. You and I will have to take a treatment from Jay. A treatment, like a vape treatment. Oh, oh what if, I what if you could put vaccines into vape? Like, you, you want a polio vaccine? Just vape it. You know what I'm saying? That'd be cool. Yeah, you know? Oh, you got, uh, you know, leukemia? We got a cure for it. You just got to vape it, you know? It would be like vape and cure, right? What vape about and something cure. to kill hep C? Sure, hepatitis cure. Vape and... Nice. <laughs> vape and hep. <laughs> That's vape a... your hep C away today. Just take, yeah, you get this special <laughs> vape juice. It tastes like, you know, Cocoa Puffs or something cool. And, uh, yeah, dude, I think we're onto something, man. What do you think about that, Glick? Do you think uh, we could do, like, a vape and cure? I think it's a great a idea. Vape and cure. Or vape for the cure. Like, well, every October we do the, the cancer walk in Port Richie, Hudson, right? This year we should bring vapists, right? And they could be, like, vape vaping for, for the, the cure. cure. Vape, for, vape for cure. I love that idea, man. How about it? What if, if weed really does cure cancer and you can vape your weed, you know how people do that, um, what if you could vape weed for the cure for cancer? In Port Richie, it's been decriminalized. Right. That's where we do our, our walk. Everybody could get a cheap vapor, right? Even people that don't vape, non-vapists, if you will. And then uh, somebody like uh, Homeless Chuck could supply the uh, marijuana, and um, they could all vape for a cure, you know? And it would be a way more wet, mellow. Instead of, like, walking for cancer, and then everybody's drinking beers and smoking cigarettes and stuff, instead, they're, like, clean vaping marijuana and curing cancer at the same time while they're marching for a cure for a cause, I think it's great. I think it's I a would, great idea. I would way rather vape for a cause than have to walk for a cause. I can tell you <laughs> yeah, that. You got to do dude. both. You do what? both. Yeah. And you, everybody's got a peep, a no, pink, bullshit, a pink vapor, man. vapor machine or whatever you call those things. Oh, like. crap, man. I'm going to vape and, and cure. I'm not going to walk and cure and vape, walk, vape and cure. That's not. What? Use it vape and cure. Well, you could sit in a golf cart. How about that? It's All a right. golf cart friendly city. I, right. I don't know if y'all knew that. Port Richie is a golf All cart right. friendly city. I could vape on the back of a uh, golf cart. That'd be cool. You just can't vape and drive. Why not? Well, if there's marijuana in it, then you'll be impaired and you get a DUI or DWI or whatever they call it. And you're so riddled with rules. I don't know if I'm going to take part in this. Well, if you didn't, you know, I'll probably be working that night it. anyway. Well, I'll, I'll walk for the cure while others vape and cure. Let's see what uh, Glick's saying here. In the, in the, I will be Dr. Vape and bring the world of vape and cure. Our master vapist sh- could shock on the vape cure right in the patient's face. <laughs> <laughs> the money shot right there. <laughs> That's ridiculous, I like man. That. I like to call a manufacturer in China and get a deal on, on see if they give me a bunch of vapes, vapor, a bunch of vape, whatever you vape with, <laughs> machines, so I can sell these things on the street corner. Why do you have to go to China, Dad? Why can't you be using an American-made vape machine? Yeah, what's up with that? Does, uh-huh. does Trump uh, support uh, American vape machines? Yeah. you, you got to go to right to China? Why, I mean, at least well, if you're going to do it, why don't you go to Bangladesh and get some vape machines? <laughs> <laughs> why has it got to be China, man? Because well, Pops has had a, a lustful evening with a Muslim woman, and he's thinking more like Bangladesh. <laughs> so, How about, you see what I did there? Bangladesh? Come on, man. Jesus Christ, man. I laugh at all your stupid jokes. Nobody laughs at mine. Bang a dish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Thank you. Thank you. The wall just cracked with that one. <laughs> uh, let's get into this right now. It's time for the Kevin Holly Show News featuring Jay, Pops, Homeless Chuck, and Kevin Holly, where you'll hear more about news, a little bit more information about What's in the news? And what's new with the news on the Kevin Holly Show? All right, guys. In uh, Amethris, Italy, uh, according to the uh, Associated Press, uh, rescue, cu- uh, rescue crews uh, are using bulldozers and their bare hands, uh, and they're racing to dig out survivors from a strong earthquake that reduced their three <laughs> central Italian towns to rubble on Wednesday. That's today, right? August 24th, 2016. The death toll stands at 120, uh, but the number of dead and missing are uncertain given the thousands of vacationers in the area for the summer's final days. Um, 
The magnitude 6.2 quake struck at about 3.36 this morning a.m. And uh, residents uh, awakened before dawn by the tremble. Uh, trembler emerged from their crumbled homes to find what they described as apocalyptic scenes like Dante's Inferno. Uh, with entire blocks of buildings turned into piles of sand and rock, thick dust choking the air, and putrid smells of gasoline, gas, natural gas. The town is not here anymore, said Sergio Perosi, the mayor of the hardest-hit town, Amatris. I believe the toll will rise. The magnitude 6.2 quake struck at 3.36 a.m. and was felt across a broad swath of central Italy, including Rome, where residents woke to a long swing, followed by aftershocks. The Tembler shook the Lazio region and Umbria region and La Marche of the Adriatic coast, a highly se- uh, seismic area that has uh, witnessed major quakes in the past. And lastly, dozens of people were pulled out uh, alive, thank God, by rescue teams and volunteers that poured in from around Italy. Um, She's alive, two women cheered as they ran up the street in uh, Pescara de, uh, del Tronto. One of the uh, three hardest hit uh, hamlets. Were they carrying pans of lasagna with them, or did no, they say no? They uh, found a, spaghetti. They found a ten year old girl and pulled her from the rubble seventeen hours after the quake uh, struck. Um, and there was uh, wails when bodies emerged. People were cheering in the streets. Unfortunately, ninety percent we pulled out are dead, but some make it. And that's why we are here," said Christian uh, Bianchetti, a volunteer from Arrete, who, who was working a devastated uh, Amaris. Uh, where flood uh, lights were set up so the rescue could continue throughout the night. Uh, Premier uh, Matteo Renzi visited the zone Wednesday, uh, greeted rescue uh, teams and survivors, and said that uh, the toll stood at 120 dead and was likely to rise. At least 368 others were injured, and he promised the quake-prone area that uh, no family, no city, no hamlet will be left behind. So uh, that happened... uh, and if you look at Italy on the map, I mean, they're they're in between uh, Croatia, Slovenia, Barcelona, uh, Greece, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria, uh, right out in the Mediterranean Sea there. And, um, you know, Rome is uh, pretty much south-central Italy, uh, not counting the island of Sicily, of course. But uh, how about that, man? That's got to suck. A big-ass earthquake, 120 people dead, 370 people injured, and a bunch of people missing. Pops, what are your thoughts on that, man? What, I mean, you say, like, what's worse, tornadoes, earthquakes. Uh, you know, an earthquake, you know, you stand outside and you feel the earthquake, and it's just kind of like you're standing on water probably, but when you're inside, you don't know if the building's going to collapse underneath you, above you, whatever. What do you think, man? Well, neither one is good because you're getting blown off the face of the earth or you're getting crumbled up and down into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the measurement, how, how severe, you know. But just imagine, I mean, big houses just turning into rubble. And if there's a bunch of people in them, the people are all in there. Well, the ones down in the bottom are hard to get to. Yeah. I, I, I heard that that they had, they had you know, uh, backhoes and stuff like that trying to remove the rubble. But it got to the point where... A shovel was too dangerous because you dig a shovel in it to scoop some stuff and you might you injure somebody. You yeah. might hit somebody in the face, and, you know. And, and Pops, look at the pictures up here on the monitor. Can you see that? Can I Can I say something real quick? Jaber, back up a little bit. Pops, look at that. Can you see yeah, it? I, I can't, can't see it. it. All right. Yeah. It's pretty nasty looking, man. That's oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. It just looks like broken concrete. That's a whole city right <laughs> there, you know. I love raviolis, man. Homemade <laughs> raviolis. Really, dude? Dude, my sister makes them. She makes the dough, rolls it all out, puts the meat. I mean, we help her fork them. We call it forking. It's like kind of a pun on fucking forking. You're, forking. You, you and your sister and fork that, together? Yeah, when we make raviolis. And uh, <laughs> she, makes a, she makes a homemade sauce, dude. The sauce is outstanding. Now, I can tell you're wine. not Italian because you would call it gravy if you were. No. What are you guys, man? Unless you're some kind of weird friggin'. What are your nationalities, you and Pops? I, I forget. I know you're Polish. No, not Polish. I know you're uh, African. I'm kind of. I'm, I'm 50% Lithuanian, which is 100% on my mom's side. Okay, that's right. Which is right close to Poland, but it's an upper class Polwark. <laughs> what about Pops? And then Pops is a <laughs> mutt, dude. Pops has got German, Irish, French, Gypsy, German, Jew, um, English. Scottish, English. All right. Art, yeah, his side goes all over the map. I'm uh, I'm half Italian, 
and half Irish. I've got a little smidgen of German and a little smidgen of uh, Bohemian or Czech. Um, so I take a little offense to your ravioli comments, man. I mean, that kind of hits home. I'm a McWop, pretty much. Yeah. McWopper. Well, so. It's just why? What, what's wrong with my ravioli comments? Well, we're talking about, you know, dead Italians and tourists, and you're talking about raviolis, you know, I mean. Oh, too soon? It's yeah, it's a little too soon, I guess. Maybe his sister uh, is half bo is half uh, Lithuanian, Bohemian. I'm part half Lugan and half Italian. Okay, yeah. You and said she makes great. Oh, okay. I I get it. I get it. I shouldn't have been talking about food during the time of death and destruction. But you know what, though, you talk about food a lot. You know, you like food, so I, I love double cheeseburgers. I give it. I'll give it a pass this time, man. All right. I guess did that ruin going back to all the death and destruction over there? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm really sorry for those Italians over there. It sucks, man. What if it happened in Greece? What would you say? Uh, opa. <laughs> no, I'd say I'd love pasticcio, dude. Really, that's uh, what I'm pasticcio going for. Pasticcio is yeah. great. Um, is, now, what do you like better, pasticcio or moussaka? Oh, pasticcio all day long. All day long is it because it's got the noodles and the meat? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not big on eggplant, so okay. uh, all right. You you're know. you're not a big eggplant. I'm not a big eggplant guy. Okay. Well, now, what if you could have like a bratwurst? A bratwurst. <laughs> Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I was just thinking. Pops, what a, what is your favorite food, Pops, while we're on the subject? Depends what time of the day it is. No, fuck that. All in general, all around, your favorite thing to put in your mouth, what is it? Uh, food, Dad. He said food. Well, I like, I like, I like, <laughs> I like, uh, I, I like lobster tail. That's what I'm talking about, man. I would have said the same exact thing. Had you answer, asked me that question? I was getting ready to. Thanks for, you know. Lobster tail right there. Now, do you <sighs> like spiny lobster, red lobster? What's your favorite kind of lobster? I mean, there's a few different kinds. Do you Al- like two pound, two pound tails from Maine? Two pound tails from Maine. Well, Cold I'll tell water. you. I've had some uh, one pound, actually one pound tails, not two pound lobster, but a one pound tail. And they come from South Africa. And they are really freaking good, too. Yeah. But Maine lobster's got to be the best. Cold water lobster. Yeah, Not Canada, sure. though. Canada, it's like, I don't know. They got I, that weird accent, you know. Yeah, and then their heads bounce up and down without touching. That creeps me out. <laughs> and their claws aren't together. They're just I, like. I, I, <laughs> that's why I said tails. I don't like the. You can have the bodies. <laughs> I don't want I will. I will suck dry every single little foot. And claw and ventricle chamber on that lobster. And every little boy from Canada. What? Really? <coughs> Which, hey, man, I wanted to get to this Olympic thing, dude. Let's do it. Because I'm telling you what, man, every media outlet has put these guys down <laughs> and they have busted their chops. The swimmers, bro. I'm so hot. <laughs> Vape and chill. Chris says, hey, Jay Forks, his sister, my erection is back. <laughs> the bill will be. He said what? Jay Forks, his sister, my erection is back. And he says, Pops loves tube steak in his mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's cheap comedy right there. But it's making me laugh. Dude. Yeah, the bill's going to be in the mail on that one there, the bill? Uh, Chris. The bill. The bill. Yeah. For getting his erection back. I just, oh, you know, prov- yeah. provided a service for him. Tell him, tell him he's got one coming and it ain't going to be good. <laughs> uh, you know what, Chris Glick? We're going to send you a uh, mushroom tipped beef neck steak in the mail for you to enjoy. A uh, little chipped beef, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to the Olympics, man. Yes, I mean, dude. everybody's talked about it all yes. week long, but I'm sure our listeners would like to hear our take on what happened. So let's I do think it. I, I think it's a bunch of bullshit, man. These guys got robbed, bro. I mean, I don't know how it works in Rio, and I think there was so much political correctness going on to where these guys are having to come out and say, "Oh, well, it didn't go down like this or whatever." From everything I've heard, all right, they were at a gas station. Supposedly, something went down. Somebody held a gun to them, right? Demanded the money from their wallet. They ran out from behind that building. The only video that's available. It's all bullshit. You're wrong, Jay. You're way yeah. wrong. You're what way what happened is they got they got drunk. Yes. They, were, they went into a in, into a restroom, 
and pissed on the walls and right. and and uh, did some damage in the restroom. Ripped down like a poster or something. And yeah, you've seen you've down. seen videos of this. You've seen. Well, I've I've heard ten people talking about it. It's all over but, the news, but, man. But but why 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 is Rio not posting? Yeah, I've heard it. I've hey, heard hey, the story. Hey, hey, they supposedly hey. destroyed a bathroom. The only video. The only picture that I have seen was a crack on some pexy the glass. Kid, the, kid, the kid agreed to pay the damages like that they said, and bucks. he gave him a $100 tip. Something like that, so yeah. He knew, he, and he got the fuck out of there. No, listen, Pops, I and heard. And then they, 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 the three guys, be, be, before he got out of there, they con- contrived this. Gun. There was a gun. The guy pulled a gun because he wanted to get the damage paid for. I guess. Well, okay. also because they were being All detained. Right. What I heard was that these guys were drunk. They were away from where they were supposed to be. They're not supposed to be out there to begin with. They get drunk, then they go into the bathroom. They piss on the wall. They rip down a poster. Uh, of private security. They're also prison guards, but they were doing a moonlighting job as like private security. They showed up, found out these guys were doing you know rip down a fucking sign or whatever. So they pulled out their guns to detain them. Then they figured out the damages were about 50 bucks. They said, give us 50 bucks. You're free to go. So that's what happened. And then they start, the dude starts, Ryan Lochte, is that his name? Starts crying about how he got robbed and makes this bullshit story up. He should have just shut his mouth, man. Just shut the fuck up, you know? Bullshit, man. That's not how it works in America, dude. That's not in America. That was in Brazil, dude. Yeah, well, in America, that would be called robbery. Yeah. <laughs> That would but be called in robbery. Brazil, it's and like, hey, pull a gun we're not, he, got, he got up. I heard him say, I'm sorry what I did. We shouldn't have done it. Yeah, because of the politically correct culture well, with all hey, the problems hey, that's hey, been hey. going on in Rio. They, the, the, other- kids, the kids were American athletes. They, in, they, 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 they were a disgrace to their country. They, no, they, they weren't. They did. They, the hell, they weren't. No, they but, weren't. I, 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 they paid dearly for their stupid mistake. Yeah, because yeah, they, they paid to the tune of like 400 million. bucks cash out of their pocket it was 50 for bucks, pissing man. on a wall. No, it was like 400. Listen, if you're in a place you're and not supposed to be and you're an Olympian and you go out and get drunk when you're not supposed to and you piss on a wall and break a, a sign and they bust you for it and they say, you know what, 50 bucks, call it America. even. America. 50 bucks, call it even. You walk away from that, you pay your 50 bucks no, and no. you go back to your hotel and no. you shut up about that's, it. That's not the way it went down, though. That's what it should have went not, down. That's, that's not the way it been. went down. Yeah, well, this guy the way dug it his went own down grave was he dug they his own pulled, grave. Man. They pulled a gun on an American citizen. They were security, and man. Him they didn't know anything and yet. They robbed him of his money. The, no. You know what? They should have been able. Bullshit. They were not That's robbed. not the way. That's they not, were not. They all were three, robbed. All three of they them. were robbed. They of course, they paid not. a fine, dude. It's not like they have yeah. a judicial system like we have. The, the well, that's robbery. Like, that's they were robbery. Like, no, they were like, you, you, you could pay 50 bucks and get out of this and go home. They should have just left. That's robbery. That's not, robbery. That's not robbery. How much does it cost to wipe a little piss up off a freaking uh, 50, oh. wall? 50 bucks and walk away? 50 bucks? Well, 50, uh, 50 uh, bucks uh, uh, and walk 50 away? Bucks? Yeah, 50 that bucks. Like, and, and, well, with Rio's hold, money? Hold. With Rio's money, bucks. that should have been like a uh, an American money? That should have been like a $4 fine from are the freaking police. You, are you eating double cheeseburgers right now? And you're that should have like, been like a $4 fine. Here's your $4 ticket in American so it's money. So $50. And it's you not get like somebody a, to come in for $0.25 cents and wipe the piss up oh off the wall. God, they got robbed, bro. Oh, $50, really? Yeah. Well, they no, should have. They, then they should have. They should have accepted four hundred, whatever. Then they should have said, "Okay, here's our four hundred bucks. Don't tell anybody what happened. We'll go back to our hotel and forget everything. Why? Everything would have been they fine." They did exactly what they should have been. They should have been. Well, we just got robbed. Man. Really, you're gonna take sides with this lockdown? Absolutely. Guy? You're high, dude. Yeah, absolutely, you're high. You're fucked Definitely up. Absolutely. You are having. American you're having meat sweats right now, Ameri- man. <laughs> You're having meat sweats right now, dude. You need to go out and find Turkey Man. Americans, <laughs> Americans should not be treated like that when they're in another country. Americans they shouldn't, shouldn't act like that. That's the yeah. trouble with what what they were. They they're on Thank Americans. You, Pops. They think they can go piss on somebody's wall. At least that yes, asshole. Yes, Americans. yes we should stupid. be able to as Americans. Fuck you. We give him four dollars. <laughs> we give him four dollars. Oh look, we got a deal going on down here right outside Trump Towers. Dump towers. Oh wow! Look at that. That I'm, is. I'm going to narrate this right now. We got a guy in a gray shirt, long hair, sunglasses on top of his head, wearing shorts and black socks. Yep. With uh, are those sandals or shoes? We got a guy in a neon green shirt with a black hat and black shorts. We've got a uh, slightly attractive, tall, blonde-haired female holding a bunch of paperwork uh, with a black uh, headband on, holding her hair out of her face, standing up against the wall, and it looks like they're trying to. 
uh, maybe rent a car hauler from the U-Haul place downstairs. All right, listen. All right, let me ask you something right now. That guy's smoking a cigarette. Get what if this chick? What if this chick just happened to piss on the wall right now? Oh, shit. And then bent the sign over. Yeah. Could I run down there with a gun and be like, "Excuse me, you guys owe four hundred dollars right now." I think she kicked your be, ass, man. She's wearing. Um, not like, if I uh, had a gun, dude. I got a gun. You can take it down there if you want. Yeah, but but no, would that be, be robbery? Um, would that be robbery? This is America, not Rio, bro. So. Okay, so uh, what what are you saying? Hey, man? I got a clear uh, view of the tag on their truck, man. It looks like they're trying to rent this tr- or return this trailer is what it is, and there's nobody there. It. Um, All right, I'm gonna run down real empty. quick and I'll act like I'm the U-Haul agent. Yeah, what do you we, say? We could probably put that. <laughs> we put that trailer on. Christmas, Give me the cordless man. mic. <laughs> it's right there, dude. It'll pick it up. If I put the antenna by the window. Oh my God! Yeah, there's a red light flashing inside the uh, building too. I wonder if they set the alarm off. We might get a little bit of uh, police activity over here. For those of you that don't know or haven't been into our studio. Uh, the dump towers here. We're on the third floor, uh, downtown Newport Ritchie on U.S. Highway 19, between Golf Boulevard and, and uh, or just south of Golf Boulevard, uh, one light south of Main Street in beautiful downtown Newport Ritchie, in the Pasco Professional Center. And uh, our window overlooks the uh, U-Haul uh, rental place right next door, where you can rent moving trucks and car haulers and trailers and things like that. Get hitches installed, whatever, and. Uh, from time to time, in the middle of the night while we're doing our show, people will pull in, and uh, they're trying to conduct business down here. Now they're they're all gone. It looks like they abandoned the trailer and just the truck's gone and everything, man. They took off. They totally took off. They just here's your trailer. See ya. <laughs> all right. I just want to close out my whole Olympic deal by yeah, saying I, I think, I, you're, I think you're we being should. A dead uh, horse, man. I think we should bomb the shit out of Rio for the way they treated our <laughs> swimmers. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. There's nobody. You know, these guys come down. All they're doing is looking to win gold medals and come home safe. And they're not looking to have guns stuck in their face and be robbed at gunpoint wow. for pissing on a pissing on a wall in a bathroom. Oh, my God. Like, if I get robbed every time I pissed on a wall in a bar or a ba- in a grocery a store. A bathhouse. A bathhouse. In the mangroves. It, yeah. If I get robbed How every time. How many times time, have you been mo- robbed in, a, in the mangroves, man? I've never been to the mangroves. You Bullshit. Me. Listen. If I got robbed every time I accidentally pissed on a wall, I'd probably be dead by now. All right? That's what I think about your whole little story here about the Olympics. I think Pops and I are the uh, smarter ones on this deal. That's and a problem. You, you guys wrong, listen man. to you listen to too much MSNBC. You guys are so <laughs> brainwashed. You're so freaking brainwashed. That you have no clue what's going on in the world. Jay's trying you to be that listen. guy right now. He's trying to be that guy, dude. Uh, you guys just listen to that. You wake up, Mo, let's turn on MSNBC. Well, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you what. Oh, those bad that's, that's swimmer most, Olympic guys. That's the most expensive piss those kids ever took. <laughs> because it's going to cost them millions of dollars in endorsements. No, it yeah, is not. That's right. Yeah. I will buy a box of Wheaties with Ryan Lochte's face on it any day of the week. That'll never happen, You won't man. get the chance, man. No, you have to pay the chance. Yeah. Yeah. Wheaties wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. Bullshit. All right, so let's uh, move on to the news here. Uh, speaking of uh, tropical environments, uh, there is a strong tropical wave, and it's moving westward across the northern Leeward Islands right now. Reports from an Air Force reconnaissance aircraft indicate that this system still lacks a well-defined circulation, but it nevertheless is producing tropical storm force winds in squalls over the northernmost Leeward Islands. Although strong upper-level wind shear is current, keeping the system disorganized it could strengthen during the next couple of days conditions could become more favorable for development by the weekend when the system is near the central or northwestern bahamas which is right across the pond of the florida straits from miami uh, florida so since the wave is so poorly organized right now it is difficult for computer models to latch onto a center of circulation and it's caused considerable model flip-flopping from run to run. However, models are coming into better agreement on possible impacts in Florida eventually. And I'm looking at a spaghetti model right now on this. I'll pull it up on the moder- monitor here. So yeah, I've see seen it. this, and that's yeah. it's totally false. It is like it's dead straight right on the peninsula and of Florida. Yeah, I know, but all those are wrong. That thing's going to hook down. No way, dude. Oh, absolutely. It's going to go way down towards... I- I've seen this stuff, man. I've been living in Florida a long time and studying. I'm, I'm kind of like a... Uh, right. Pro meteorologist. I, I wonder 
We haven't had a major hurricane in like 11 years. 11, yeah. Okay, the last bad one was Charlie in 04. Knock on wood. Yeah, thanks, Pops. Pops, what do you think, man? Have you? Uh, I know you watch the news a lot. And, uh, what do you, do you think it's coming our way or what? I I... I I, am, I'm, I have no opinion. I didn't. I didn't see it. I can't see it. Good. I'm enough. looking at the models here, and every yeah, single yeah. spaghetti model comes on each side of Florida. It's there's. It's not going it, to miss it. It's not going to grow. If it does grow, it's going to hook a, a sharp left and head down south towards uh, Yucatan. Um, if it does no come way, over, man. If it does come up over to us, we're going to have a high pressure that's going to come out of the east. Um, given that, you mean with the west? a. No, uh, high pressure out of the east. No, that, that that's comes going to uh, cause a dis, uh, disruption. Um, you give that with a tailwind. That what about the, the wind shear over the uh, tall mountains of uh, uh, the uh, Dominican Okechobe? Republic? No, the Dominican and Haiti, Hispaniola. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's going to hook left. Yeah, and but the only thing though, Jaybird, the only thing is that every single spaghetti model puts it just north of. Hispaniola, so there's not going to be any wind shear, and there's uh, favorable development in the warm waters of the Caribbean. Yeah, but you got to take in you got to take into factor the millibars, the pressure. That's what um, I'm saying. That's, what I, that's exactly that's what I'm taking into consideration. That the pressure is no going chance. To, By the time it reaches us, it might be a uh, category four hurricane, probably a mild tropical storm. Shit, it's already once it that. goes across. Once it goes across the land, it might enter through uh, Miami. By the time it makes it to the Tampa Bay area. Uh, we'll be lucky if we get, you know, a little I'll bit of rain. I'll tell you one thing. It's going to rain. It's going to we'll, rain. We'll be lucky if we get a little bit of rain. All right. That's so, Pops, what do you think? What's worse, hurricane or tornado or earthquake? Well, there again, you know, I mean, a 30-mile-an-hour a, a tornado compared to a 50-mile or 60-mile tornado or a a two-point hurricane compared to a six-point or six-point-five, like this. Uh, Her, uh, earthquake, earthquake yeah, yeah. You know, the bigger, the bigger, the worse. And uh, when they're big ones, neither one of them is worth being in. You know, yeah, they're, well, dead, they're I, deadly. Yeah. If I can interject on this, I would like to say that the one thing no, you do you have um, going for you on a on a um, earthquake and a tornado is that you have no idea they're coming. A hurricane, at least, you've got. Yeah. A little bit of time to prepare for it. Now, for us specifically in Florida, uh, we are you know right at sea level a lot of our coastline and, and even mid you know uh, center central Florida. So even though we have the warning, uh, a hurricane dumps so much rain that yeah. the flooding is a huge thing for us. That and they produce well. tornadoes yeah. in addition. So. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, but now I, I remember a good example: the last hurricane, one of the last hurricanes we had. I, we were li- I was living in a trailer. And there was predicted that it was going to be coming right up, right up Sarasota Bay, and Butch and then uh, what's his name? They went down, down to uh, the guy down and uh, what is it? You're talking about Charlie, huh? You're talking about yeah. Hurricane Charlie. Charlie hit Maybe uh, that, yeah. Port Charlotte. Anyhow, the hard, they went hard, down. Right. They went down to Port Charlotte or way yeah. below Port Charlotte, and they they they, they were get, catching real hell down there, and we didn't even feel it. I mean. You say you get warning from a hurricane within a certain amount of miles, but well, yeah, you you can you can you can go in the wrong direction on a hurricane and get your oh, yeah. get your ass. And beat. you know what, pops? I, that leads me to believe that um, a tornado that might only be three miles wide or two miles wide or one mile wide or whatever it might be, a, 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 a you know a level five a tornado will have winds of like two hundred and twenty miles an hour, or whatever it is. Yeah. A category four hurricane or a three hurricane, which is what we see the most, uh, has winds like Charlie had one hundred and sixty mile an hour gusts, yeah. one hundred and twenty sustained. Um, I was in Hurricane Sandy in a cruise boat, hundred mile an hour winds sustained right on the bow of the ship, and uh, gusts in the one hundred and twenties, whatever. Yeah, that's pretty windy. It knocks your fence down at your house. It'll blow some trees down. Gusts in 150 is a lot. But imagine 220 miles an hour. Yeah. That's like a train coming and just rolling yeah, through. Yeah, so yeah. in my opinion, tornadoes are far worse than anything else, man. A tornado, they call it the finger of God, you know. That that will just level anything in its path, even though it's a smaller path, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So for us, though, tornadoes don't really level Florida. Hurricanes dump so much rain. And then you get that wind as yeah. well. Not as much wind as a tornado, but it does some damage. But the, the flooding, water damage. The water is where it's at here for us. So this looks I've like seen, a rainmaker right here. I've man. seen in Charlie and when Andrew came down, I've seen yep. brick buildings that were torn down by the winds on both wow. of those. So, yeah, yeah. 
I well, mean, if you, you want to talk about news, talk about talk about down in Louisiana. Those poor people are right three, now. Nobody's touching county, that right now. Yeah, three counties down there. Those people are devastated. And you know what pops is funny about that? Not funny, but what what is weird about that is that. Everybody's saying things on Twitter and social media like, well, that's what happens when you live below sea level. <laughs> or, or, or that's what happens when uh, yeah. you, know, you don't maintain your levees. Yeah. Well, you know what? The federal government maintains the levees. And guess what else? The cities, the three counties you're talking about, none of which are under sea level. Yeah. And guess what else? None of their levees are busted. This no. is a totally different area of Louisiana. Yeah, most of those places don't never flood. There's nothing to do with that yeah. shit. Look at the yeah. facts, you know? But I, 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 I heard people talk, say, hey, we've lived here for 25 years, and we've never, got, we've never exactly. had water even yeah. close here. But now there's six feet, six feet and, of and water in their house. And that's why you don't see it on the news, because it's not like... Uh, uh, another Katrina, even though it is oh, as hey, much damage, but it's not yeah. newsworthy for for some reason. They're, they want to talk about the goddamn Olympics and the guy pissing on a wall instead of talking about what's happening in Louisiana. Yeah, you know where yeah. the hell's Obama on vacation? You know Golfing. what I mean? Where, why would not? Why would he not be there? Why is not? Because he's not running for re-election, man. Thank you. He's a lame duck. And and why aren't the news outlets out there talking about it? Because they'd rather stir up racial. Uh, uh, BLM stuff. Obama or, did that when he came there. He even he implied some racial comments to it about freaking uh, like like people who you're going to help should race should not become a matter. I mean, like nobody ever anywhere said anything about this. Like the you know yeah. he's the one that's provoking all this stuff. And, that's you know, and it's going to turn out now to where oh black people weren't being taken care of. You know, because Obama started it with his lip. Yeah, whatever happened to a Bush doesn't care about black people during Katrina? Yeah. Well, how come they're not saying that about Obama right now? He's not over, You know what I mean? Yeah. Why aren't they saying that Obama doesn't care about black people? He's not there, you know? Why aren't they saying Trump does care about black people? He's there. Yeah. There, it's ridiculous, there's man. There's plenty of people saying that Bush doesn't care. Yeah. Especially if you watch what I watch. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I, well, I, listen, I hey, so if this though. hurricane does come, this and folks in the audience, if you could see me, I'm... My fingers are in the air, like, saying, like, this hurricane. Can we do a special broadcast right when it hits us? Oh, we'll hunker down. We'll, we'll go outside. We'll be up here. We'll, we'll go outside with the wireless mics, and we'll take Periscope and Facebook okay. Live video. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally I'm in for that. Hey, they say that this uh, storm will be in our area, if it does come to our area, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. All right. So it's perfect timing, man. We All can right. go out and survey the damage. We'll go do a live broadcast out in the parking lot. Tuesday night would be great. Dude. Yeah, you know what? I've got an app on my one of my old phones. I got a really nice old Galaxy uh, phone here, and um, we can actually go live on my phone in interview mode uh, through our Spreaker app and relay it back to the studio from anywhere cellularly. Right? Hey, and click. Tell these two assholes here to. Be careful what they wish for. <laughs> no, listen, I get all kinds of ideas about this. We can interview we can totally hookers it, that are walking down 19. Yeah, where do you go? Where do you hunker storm? down? Where do you hunker down, yeah. hooker? You know? Yeah, that's perfect, man. You know, we were talking earlier on break outside about uh, not leaving our McDonald's out there, your McDonald's out there, because I didn't want, like, wild boars and uh, pigs to come up to the... Uh, because, you know, there's... Wild, I saw a dead wild boar on Starkey Boulevard today. It was like 200 pounds, dude. You didn't stop and get it? I, th- I thought about it. I had my kids in the car, right? Oh, it was uh, yesterday morning. Me, dude, it was in it was, his mouth was agape. Dude, it was bleeding everywhere. It was a Who, big-ass pig, dude. food. And Jay's like, I'm not worried about pigs and boars. I'm worried about pimps and whores over here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so that's kind of a semi-plan. We will, if, if the hurricane hits... We're going to do a special edition of the Kevy, Ke- Kevin Harding Show. Did you show. just say the Kevy Harding the Show? The Kevy Harding Show. Did you call me Kevy? Kevy Aww. Harding. Aww. The seven, Aww. The Seven Folly Show. <laughs> <laughs> the Seven Follies. I could name four of them right off the bat. Kevin, Jay, Pops, and Chuck. <laughs> there's a glick. There's six, five, seven, what? <laughs> Jesus. Cheese? Cheese. Jesus. Cheese and rice. Uh, so, anyway... So well, that's a plan, dude. You know what? We, we mark your calendar, folks. This will, I mean, we went long through our break, man. We just finish up the show here in a few yeah, minutes, man. Let's do it. Well, listen, uh, you, we got a few more things here. I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to go with this real quick here. Um, this is something I haven't even done any prep on. I just saw the headline, and I'm going to just bring it up here. Um, I got two things like this here. Uh, the first thing is uh, a loose snake. Loose snake. Now. I'd like to think that I've got a loose snake myself. Anyway, loose snake with a Twitter following. I like to think I have a Twitter following also. So are they talking about me here? 
A loose snake with Twitter following wants to give Trump a hug. In Westbrook, Maine, eh? uh, a large snake believed to be lurking around a riverbank in Maine doesn't appear to be a fan of Donald Trump. In a Twitter account created for a snake dubbed Wessy P. Thon by local residents. Wessy P. Thon? Wessy Python. I get it. Wessy P. Thon. Uh, by local residents, the snake says it would like to give the Republican presidential nominee a really long hug. So, I, I get it. The big python wants to hug Donald Trump. Okay. I shoot that freaking snake in the face. The reptile created a media sensation when it was seen earlier this summer eating a beaver. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I'm reading this verbatim with no prep. I've never read this before. Okay? The reptile created a media sensation when it was seen earlier this summer eating a beaver along a riverbank in Westbrook. Officials believe the reptile is likely a constrictor or a python. The discovery of a 10-foot snake in a week ago, uh, a week ago indicates it's still around. Law enforcement officials are... Warning residents to be on the lookout. The Boston Globe, the Boston fucking Globe. What the fuck is that? Is that a fucking it's a, snake? It's a it's a fucking reptile. Is that Jay? a? It's a, we gotta call the aquarium on that, Jay. It's a fucking call python. Call the fucking coast guard. Oh my god, it's a fucking reptile, Jay. Is that a fucking snake? It wants to hug fucking presidential candidates, Jay. Jesus what the fuck? Christ. Oh. Anyway, we gotta save that thing. Yeah, there's a lot of meat left on that fucking snake, Jay. Am I lying? How big is the girth on that fucking thing, Jay? Look at that fucker. What the fuck is it? <laughs> the Public Works employees say that he saw the snake slithering along near the river on Tuesday. Are you fucking kidding me? All right, I got two things to say about this. Number one, how much of a douchebag do you have to be to create a fake account of a fucking python or a fucking uh, 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 or constrictor. Thus constrictor with a fake name that's so stupid, Wessy Python? Really? You got nothing better to do with your life than to make a fake Twitter account for a snake and then it conveniently eats Beaver along the riverbank. A snake eats beaver. Ooh, riveting, riveting fucking content right there. That's sounds, ridiculous. Sounds like that's definitely a vote for Hillary. Yeah, and that's on the uh, on the AP, yeah. the Associated Press. That's what they're going with, really. He's, that's what they got. He's probably the snake's probably already been registered as Democrat. So uh. yeah, or a predator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, though, man, that's just ridiculous, man. Anyway, if hey, I one, was a, one last thing in the news. I don't know if you've seen it even because this is just this was just happening when I left the house. But oh, it won't be the last thing. Um, I, did you see where the um, little boats were seeking uh, Iranian boats were going around a naval destroyer? No. Today. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like three Iranian boats were coming within 300 yards of a destroyer. No. Is that just destroyer like, in Iranian water? Um, no, no, not not from what they said. Either way, I mean, they were pretty friggin' stupid if they were coming up on a destroyer in these little boats, man, because we could have shot them right out of the water easily, I guarantee you. Oh, but, but with Obama's fact, presidency, but they, they yeah, would have taken yeah. everybody on that destroyer hostage, you know? Exactly. That's yeah. that's what it's getting down to, man. Uh, it's like, and, it's and, okay, and they're, so, they're so not afraid of us anymore that they will do stuff like that. China's until, been doing it. Russia's been doing it. Yeah. They've all been, you know. Until Michelle Obama accidentally hits the push button toilet flush standing up. <laughs> and it's the new button, you know, oops. And then she'll be like, oh, dudes, I'm so sorry. I accidentally hit the new button. <laughs> you know, what? What? But seriously, yeah. But seriously. But. Seriously. They're running around our destroyer in little boats Bullshit. like trying to intimidate us. I wish we would have just blast them right out. I, and I. I wish we would have put it on every news channel and watched them all explode and die. I'd like to blast every Just, news channel, too. Yeah, well, it, you know. that too. All right, so check this out, man. This is my last strange news event of the night here. Uh, <laughs> uh, twerking and lowriders. Twerking and lowriders. What does that mean to you guys? Um, I guess... Um, twerking and what? Twerking and lowriders. I no, guess it kind of uh, has to do with fat butts and dudes with their hats backwards. No, twerking is tightening up or measuring. measuring. <laughs> no, no, twerking. Twerking, Twerking, pops. Bumps. You ever been to a strip here, club? Here, Pops, I'm going to give you an example of twerking. Oh, good God. 
That's twerking. <laughs> That's twerking. Look, like, holy oh, shit, what's, Jay, dude, that is what, awesome. What's the other thing? Oh, no, we do that again on Periscope, dude. What, what's, the oh. other, what's the other thing? Uh, low riders. Low riders. Jay, don't low you, riders you're motorcycle. not going anywhere, dude. Low riders a motorcycle, ain't it? Uh, there, yeah, yeah. lowrider is a Harley Davidson. Uh, back in 1978, was uh, the best year of the lowrider, in my opinion. But uh, we're talking about like uh, you know lowrider vehicles, like cars that are lowered to the ground. Uh, Latinos and black people really love that shit, and also white trash uh, like that. Pickup trucks. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. We're gonna periscope Jaybird twerking here. Uh, anybody wants to uh, check this out? Hold on. Let me type it in. Jaybird twerking. You guys are in for a treat here. A tweet. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, here we go. Jaybird twerking right now live on the Kevin Holly Show. Oh, get it, buddy. Get it. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, wow, dude. Look at that, bro. Jaybird twerking in the house. Get low. Get low, 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 low. Oh, okay. man. That's all I got, man. Woo. <laughs> wow, that was, that was fantastic, Maybe Jaybird. Maybe low, low riders are maybe low riders are jeans hanging down below your crack of your ass. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe, maybe. That's pops. probably what low riders are. That's sagging. No, we're talking about real twerking, like Jaber just demonstrated, and we're also talking about low rider vehicles. And uh, apparently, apparently, uh, did you just have a baby? Uh, I think so. I think you had a miscarriage just now, dude. I think I pooped. <laughs> that was just blood. Don't worry, it was just well. blood. Anyway, uh, twerking low riders, twerking and low riders shut down Route 66 in New Mexico. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, a hip-hop video shoot, okay, they're filming a hip-hop video, and it shut down parts of Route 66 in New Mexico uh, this weekend because lowriders were driving across in circles as crowds of hundreds twerked in the street. So there was hundreds of people twerking like Jaybird and uh, lowriders just driving around in circles. The filming in downtown Albuquerque Sunday triggered a long block party Sunday night and uh, snarling traffic and confusing uh, motor... Con- Snarling traffic and confusing motorists, I guess those are the lowriders, uh, amid the neon lights uh, and the city's historic buildings. That's a fucking sentence fragment. I mean, that's in the AP as well. The AP sucks, man. They can't even get a sentence down. I'm going to read it verbatim. The filming in downtown Albuquerque Sunday triggered a long block party Sunday night. Snarling traffic and confusing motorists amid the neon lights and the city's historic buildings. The crew filming hip-hop artist Jandro took advantage of the unexpected spontaneous party. Because any time Jondro shows up, it's an unexpected spontaneous fucking party. We should have him on the Kevin Holly Show. Anyway. No, uh, no. Anyway, the, the scene, uh, the, the, they were shooting footage of the festivities and the videographer uh, uh, edits, edits? Is that really his name? Edits? E-D-I-T-Z. Macius. Edits. So he's a videographer and his name is Edits. I hope he's good at editing his video. Fuck it. Anyway, uh, so the whole situation just got bigger than we expected. So we went there, and the f- uh, so we went where the footage was. Uh, Albuquerque police said Jandro did not have permits. Really? You don't think a rapper named Jandro got permits for a twerking event on Route 66? Anyway, uh, they didn't get the, the needed permits to shoot the video along the blocks of Route 66 that uh, go through Albuquerque. So. Um, Macy has said permits uh, were obtained to the, uh, film in front of one shop. I wonder what that shop was. Let's take a guess. Jay, what do you think the shop was? What kind of shop? Um, I'd have to say a vaping vape shop. <laughs> Pops, what, what, kind what, of sh- what, what does the guy do? This rapper got one permit in front of one shop, but then they destroyed Route 66 with the stupid video they were, they were filming. What kind of shop do you think he got a permit for? On Route 66? Yes, sir. Uh, coffee shop. Coffee shop. I'm going to say barber shop. <laughs> You've already read the fucking article. No, I haven't, man. So uh, it said, uh, here we go. Let me find here. The officers decided to close off parts of the mother road because of the lowriders and the street dancing. A video posted by the website ABQ Raw shows lowriders bouncing along Route 66 and children and adults circling on custom lowrider bicycles as people twerked. So the crowd ended up being, uh, numbering about 300 people, and uh, no arrests were made and no citations were issued during the peaceful event. Uh, Macy said it was nice to see families come together on a summer night. Yeah, it's so nice to see families come together twerking and blocking traffic on Route 66. Is it safe for us to say that twerking lives matter? 
Yeah. Low yeah, rider yeah, lives yeah, matter. No, no, no. This no? is this this brings me right back to the Olympic dudes. <laughs> these poor guys no, get what, what, what these poor guys get the robbed. They get robbed in Rio, and Pops? they're made out to be criminals. And these twerkers down here they should get be away with shot. murder. They should have been shot, but they're not. So what what was the shop, dude? Uh, it doesn't say. I'm gonna go with. Uh, Coffee shop pops. I think you won. It was a, it was a vape sm- vape and smoke <laughs> chill shop, dude. No, uh, you know what Jaber would have done if that uh, traffic happened on his trip down Route 66? He would have right been like. Throwing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that being said, that uh, that concludes our uh, our uh, strange news event for the night. Uh, so what's going know, on? Man. What's going on tomorrow, man? I don't know, man. I just I think I think what we should do for next week is uh, have our own little lowrider uh, twerking event in the back parking lot at the Dump Towers, the Kevin Holly Studios, man. What do you think, David? If there's some women involved, I'm not going to be out there twerking and watching you look at my ass, dude. Periscoping it. You get it started, bro. You know. You build it, they will come. If you know what I'm saying. What if pops? What if pops works? Oh, man, you can shake the wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? I think Pops is disgusted at your uh, twerking, dude. I know I am. You wanted to put it on Periscope, man. <laughs> you weirdo. You're going to go home and beat off to that. I know you. <laughs> so will so many other people. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening to the Kevin Holly Show tonight. Uh, thank you to Mel Novak, uh, legendary Hollywood actor. Thank you to Pops for contributing such awesome content tonight in comments. I love you, Pops, man. Every time Pops is live in the studio and has something to say, it's like the, the, the fucking chat room blows up, man. Everybody loves Pops, dude. You know what I mean? I'm starting to get a little jealous, to be honest with you. You know, I'm like, I'm supposed to be the host. Jay, you're supposed to be the executive reproduction agent. Yet Pops will steal the show in 10 minutes of talking, you know? Please employ the handicap. There you go. <laughs> Oh, check thanks out. Thanks to Chris uh, Glick, man. Yeah, thanks to Glick in the chat room tonight. Uh, Jay's, uh, he said, <laughs> Glick says, Jay's a thought, and uh, Jay will be holding a sign. We'll twerk for cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll show up in a lowrider van with Chuck, man. Chuck Wagon. There's so many bodies of dead hookers in that van. It'll be a lowrider, man. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, uh, check out ACW Thursday Night Throwdown tomorrow night. We'll, we, we will be there tomorrow night. Probably not broadcasting live because i got to work, but uh, I'll be there. We could always do a quick little uh, series of interviews maybe uh, with the mobile app we got. You know, Maybe we can get some people to talk to us, but we'll be there. Guess who's wrestling tomorrow night, man? I have to say I already know it's going to be Blanco Loco. Blanco Loco is scheduled to appear tomorrow Plus night. Plus Sideshow. Plus Sideshow in the uh, combat Mitch uh, Mitchell's event. Mitchell's going up against uh, Rome. Rome. Yeah, and this is Rome's uh, opening music right here. Rome will fight. That's at Rome Let's Fight. At Rome Let's Fight on Twitter. Check out our friend Rome. Uh, he's scheduled to appear on our show. We've been talking. I invited him up to the studio for a uh, uh, guest uh, interview and uh, sit in. So nice. hopefully we'll get Rome in the studio to sit in with us. We'll bring some tacos and shit. Yeah. be pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the last uh, match... Of the uh, American Combat Wrestling Combat title matches tomorrow. It's a four way fray. It's going to be Sideshow, Romeo uh, DeVito. Is that how you say his last name? I don't, yeah. Romeo, uh, Sideshow, um, and uh, who else? There's two other dudes, man. David Mercury. I David think Mercury, that's right. And, and the uh, fourth guy off the top of your head, I can't remember either. Damn it, I can't remember. It's, uh, it's not going to be uh, uh, our friend uh, Danny. It's not going to be Danny. He's got a broken jaw. Anyway, we all know Sasha's going to win, man. Sasha's totally going to win that. Oh, it's that new guy. That that new white dude, that big dude that wrestled last week against... uh, Was it Romeo he wrestled against last week? I don't remember, man. Anyway, uh, it's that new big white dude, man. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I know Sasha's going to take it, dude. Uh, I'm excited about watching that uh, four way fray, and also about watching uh, Mitch Mitchell and uh, Rome. Let's fight. That's going to be cool. I I mean, I don't know who... uh Blanco's wrestling. It doesn't matter. Whoever Blanco wrestles, he's going to pummel him, dude. I mean, we're, we're talking about the Sultan of Sit, so, Blanco Loco, man. Blanco Loco is going to show up, dude. I'm I telling know, so you. He's a little rusty, bro. You know, he's been wrestling in other uh, venues, and he's been I working know, out, dude. He still he's, might be a little rusty. You think he's going to be a little I'm rusty? I'm on your side. I'll be cheering for you, man. I'll tell you what, man. If I had red hair and I was a wrestler, I'd be a little rusty. <laughs> what if he comes in and he's got to wrestle somebody like Snoop or something? He'll kick Snoop's ass, man. There's no so. way anybody beats Blanco Loco this week. He's been gone too long. He's pumped up. He's going to kick everyone's ass, man, whoever it is. I've been hearing every week that he's going to be there. I'll have to see it when I... 
I, I can't wait, man. I believe it when I see him. Pops is from Missouri. What? Pops is from Missouri. Misery? Show me state, dude. Oh, show me. I hear you. I get it. I see what you did there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, check us out tomorrow night. We'll be, all of us will be at Thursday Night Throwdown at Kicker South enjoying uh, American Combat ACW Wrestling. And if you guys want to show up, it's uh, eight bucks to get in. Kids are free with a paying adult. They also have uh, drink specials, food specials, draft beer, domestic draft beer is $1.75. Uh, they have a great uh, uh, bartender named Blondie and an awesome uh, waitress named Brittany. Uh, they take real good care. So if you do show up, make sure you tip your bartender, make sure you tip your waitress, and definitely come say hi to us. We will all be there. I think Danny B is coming tomorrow as well. Uh, we usually have a pretty good turnout. And uh, looks like uh, Vape and Chill is excited to watch Vape and Chill Thursday and Saturday night. That guy is fucking amazing. <laughs> Vape and Chill providing content for the show in the chat room. All right, so check out the download at your leisure on any device at www.spreaker with an R, spreaker, S P R E A K E R dot com forward slash user forward slash the Kevin Holly Show. That'll bring you right to our shit. Also, we are on Facebook dot com forward slash the Kevin Holly Show. Just Google us. We're on YouTube. Uh, we're part of. We're proud to be part of uh, the Pottern family as well. Check us out on Twitter at Kevin Holly Show Four. Also on crn.yellowsite.com, along with Happy Hour, Old Justin Chambers Show, uh, Vape and Chill, the Glazed Rooper, uh, Glazed Rooster Show, uh, among many others. So uh, definitely hit us up on all that social media. We'd love to talk to you guys. Come see us live tomorrow night. Uh, we may or may not be broadcasting. We'll see. And uh, you know what, Jaybird, on that note, talking about ACW, I think we're going to play out the show with one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, what do you guys say? You want to say goodnight, Pops, Jaybird? Good night, guys. It's been real. It's been real. Pops, you got anything to say? Any final good, thoughts? Good night, folks. We'll see, we'll, we'll see you next week. Here you go. We'll talk to you next week. There I want to go, go get a double cheeseburger. Yeah, I would, love, I would love to have a double cheeseburger right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Kevin Holly Show. Thank you, Mel Novak. Thank you, Joe Williamson. And we will talk to you all again Wednesday night at 8 p.m., if not sooner. And uh, have a great night. See you. Jay loves wrestling federations, Lucha Libre masks, boots, and all. He feels a premonition that's scheduled for one fall. Jay's in to new positions. He likes dicks in the candlelight. He's got a new addiction for every Thursday night. He wants to take Loco's mask off and go dancing in the rain. He wants a white and crazy life to take away his pain. Jay's always pulling on his brain. Jay Bird's coming out, dreaming of Blanco Loco. He'll pull his pants all the way down, dreaming of Blanco Loco. His dick is devil red. Jay's skin's a color rojo. Jay is coming out, dreaming of Blanco Loco. Come on. Dreaming of Blanco Loco, come She's living la vida homo. Jay woke up in a Newport Richie, in a funky cheap motel. Jay came out and spent his money. Try to learn some wrestling skills, but he never drinks no water, only vodka and champagne. Once Jay had a taste of it, he's never been the same. Yet yeah, he'll show you his little brain. Jay Bird's coming out, dreaming of Blanco Loco. He will pull his pants down, dreaming of Blanco Loco. His dick is devil red, his skin the color rojo. Jay is coming out, dreaming of Blanco Loco. Dreaming of Blanco Loco. Jay's living la vida homo. Wants to take Loco's mask off and go dancing in the rain. 
He wants a white and crazy life to take away his pain. Yeah, Jay's always pulling on his brain. Jay Bird's coming out, dreaming of Blanco Loco. He pulled his pants all the way down, dreaming of Blanco Loco. His dick is devil red, Jay's skin the color mocha. He will blow with love the homo. Jay Bird's coming out, he's dreaming of Blanco Loco. He pull his pants all the way down, dreaming of Blanco Loco. Living la vida homo, skin's the color rojo. Jay will wear you out, living la vida homo. Living la vida homo. He's dreaming of Blanco Loco. Blanco Loco, he's dreaming of Blanco Loco, Jay's dreaming of Blanco Loco, suck it Jay.